resident in the town of Reading for 21 years. I live over on uh, the corner of Haver, and ba Haver Hill in Batchelder and uh, started last month, so I'm excited to be here. And our newest member as of tonight, she was just <laughs> sworn in, <laughs> Amy Shikatani. Amy, would you like to? Sure. So I'm Amy Shikatani. I've lived in Reading for over 30 years, three different houses. Uh, right now I live in Johnson Woods in Reading, which is off West Street. Three children. Wow. <laughs> it's exhausting. <laughs> okay. Thank you. Um, I'd like to discuss the request for determination of eligibility for 2016-6 for 420 West Street, Map 20, Lot 200. Um, Ms. Salada, would you like to talk about your project, please? Sure, sure. We want to take it out of that area and relocate it to a better spot which would connect the new driveway to the porch stairs and make a better flow of the space. Um, it doesn't, for, to us, to re put the walkway back into the existing spot doesn't make sense because of the, the elevation and that tree as it grows, it's going to continue to do the same thing with the function. And, and what would happen to your existing garage? The garage actually is, um, it's not a functioning garage, it's the way the driveway is right now, it's, it's very difficult to use it to swing the car in and out. We use it as storage for a lot of equipment, um, bicycles. So we're, we're going to keep it where it is and just use it in that capacity. <laughs> we had a uh, site visit on Monday. Um, Mike, would you like to talk about the site visit? Sure. So. We as far as I can see, it was a fairly straightforward. You, you could see the, you know, the the area, the walkway, and the front is in pretty poor condition. You can actually see that there's a front tree there that's actually you know, tilting everything over. It, you know, I, I don't think it's probably walkable at this point. Um, the, I mean, it, it's really as it says on the map. You know, the the on uh, the drawing. I guess that's really all. I, you know, I, I thought it was pretty straightforward. Did you did you get my? Oh, I did. I don't. Sorry. Whatever. Um, there is an 80 foot uh, Norway spruce that she is uh, proposing to uh, remove uh, to make room for. Uh, I guess the a new driveway. That's the only thing I'd like to add. And it it the resource area is the outer riparian zone from the 100 to the 200 feet of the Abajona River as it passes under West Street. I guess, yeah, so the, the one thing that I, I did notice in the, when I, while I was out there is the new proposed driveway is not only, and it's, I think they say this in the application, but it's, it's further away from the resource area. It's also draining the opposite, yeah, sloping the opposite direction from the resource area. Mm -hmm. um, but I think that's a, an improvement at the least. And there's also a net um, decrease in the impervious surface as well. The uh, only thing, is, and I think you mentioned this there, is is the fence part of this work that you plan on doing now? It is. Could you, is it on the, oh. It should be. I, okay, yeah, it is. Yeah. Yeah. Four, six, okay, I, I don't think I just. And then the other, um, the other piece that's on there is to make our flow to from our back of the house to the new space, we do want to put a, a nice patio set up on there with an impervious paper. Mm -hmm. So we have a nice spot for tables and chairs. Yep. Um, um, I just wanted to um, just say in, in general, I. Um, 
general, I like the um, moving of the, the the redesign of the driveway um, and the increased um, the decreased impervious cover. Um, you know, that said, if all those pervious pavers were impervious, it would be an increase. <laughs> um, it would be an increase in impervious cover. So I'm, great, I'm glad you went with pervious pavers for that. That was, that was, uh, I was glad to see that. Um, another thing I S wanted to me, ask. Excuse yeah, me, maybe I misunderstood, but I thought they were decreasing. They're decreasing right. impervious because they're not counting the pervious pavers. Where are the pervious pavers? Which are on the, the walkway the and the back patio. And the patio mm -hmm. that's attached and then the walkway that's attached that's coming around yeah. the way that's part. Yeah. Yeah. So um, are we counting the impervious pavers as 100% impervious? They're pervious pavers. I mean, are we counting them as 100% impervious? Yes. In, in this I think so as, for as, this. as far as counting as... Pervious or impervious? Pervious. Pervious. So we're counting them as 100% pervious. pervious. We or the application? Yes. Yeah. The application is counting it as 100% pervious. If they're installed to spec and... Do we have Are manufacturer specifications yeah. that list them as 100% pervious? Usually they list them as some percent pervious. I didn't see any with this application. Um, <coughs> I mean, if you included the pervious pavers, it looked to be, I mean, and I, I didn't do an exact calculation, but uh, the pervious pavers look to be approximately 240 square feet. I kind of uh, I doubled the the, um, the patio. <coughs> um, that said, um, the question I did have after commenting about the pervious versus impervious um, was when that driveway, the existing driveway, is removed. Is there going to be any regrading or any any new soil brought in to bring anything back up to grade or? Uh, Do you know? It's pretty flat right now, okay. and uh, I would I would think we would need to kind of reloom it and reseed it <coughs> with soil. It's my assumption because that's going to come out. So we'll have to, you know, we'll have it. I don't want to dip it there. So um, yeah, I'm guessing that'll probably be down. a couple of inches. Possibly. I mean, I'm not too um, I'm not too experienced with driveway removal, but I don't think the I mean, maybe the engineers can speak to that on the board. Like, what's the typical depth of that's removed? What's typically taken off? Just the asphalt. I think they're just going to replant the asphalt, is what yeah. I would assume. Oh, and keep the base. Yeah, keep the base. Put a couple <coughs> inches of loom on it. Throw some seed on it. Massive so it's just a couple inches. Massive shifting grade loam and then seed okay. it. Is what I would assume. <coughs> yeah. I'm sorry I answered. I'm not an engineer. No, you're knowledgeable. You know, but you're you're knowledgeable. You're in the business of. I play one on TV. I get it. Um, Chuck, do you have any comments, questions? Um, did we talk about the tree that's being removed? Mm -hmm. okay. Before we go to that, you know, I continue with the line that of the uh, Anika was addressing. So go ahead. If I'm, I'm sorry I haven't done as much homework as I should have, but if I understand correctly, the <coughs> proposed plan reduces the impervious surface by 214 square feet and they're proposing 200 square feet of pervious pavers. So if that's the case, even if we considered those pervious pavers impervious, they'd still be decreasing the impervious surface by 14 square feet. Do you have a, that number for the? I have the 214. I thought I just heard that the pervious so you're, you're, pavers you're, were 200. So that's, that's just the net. So you're not giving the increase. pervious pavers any percentage of? Well, th this is my concern. If we consider these pavers 100% pervious without any manufacturing <coughs> specification, we have established a precedent that people can put in pervious pavers of their entire lot and there would be no increase in impervious surface. And I'm not comfortable with establishing that precedent. I don't have any objection to this project, but I do not want to establish the precedent of calling pavers 100% pervious because 
they're not. And manufacturer's specifications usually specify a percentage. And I'm comfortable with going with that, but I can't just accept 100% pervious without some documentation. I don't think the applicant uh, made that claim that they w that it was. Um, they just called, you know, according to the handout, it just from um, the engineer, Mr. Sullivan, it's pervious pavers, you know, which, which is to whatever spec they pick, you know, in terms of what type of paver. And well, how many square feet of pavers do we have? That wasn't totaled in my review of this. Um, Didn't you just say 200? No, yeah, I didn't. I, I approximated. I didn't do a real calculation so on the, this. So the patio is 120 square feet. And right. I just doubled that because I thought, well, the walkway, walkway maybe is, is a second patio. Walkway is four okay, feet so wide. E even if we allow zero, we're still at in the positive 14 square feet. It's still a viable project, and I don't think we have to worry about a precedent. If someone comes before us <laughs> and they want to pave a thousand square feet of their yard. Then we need some manufacturer specs. No, I agree yeah, it's a no. viable project project. I yeah. just want to call the commissioner's attention that we cannot, without documentation, consider <coughs> paving your pavers a hundred percent pervious. As noted. I think that's duly noted. Uh, as noted, and but there is some perviousness to it. Absolutely. Which we don't know, so but to get back to Chuck's <coughs> comment about the Norway spruce. Yeah, I just wanted to know if that was going to get replaced. I'd like to replace it, something more functional and an extra scale for that corner of the lot and do a little bit more landscaping with Same spot. Do you want to propose it in this I application? Same spot. Um, the, 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 I don't know how that would work. Why, why do you want to take it down? I think because of the function of the driveway, it would just be a better flow for the area. It's pretty tight coming off of West Street. It is. Uh, that corner is, is tough. <laughs> yeah. Um. So, we, so here you can't see because of this tree? This is the tree right here. That, that is the tree I'd like to, to break down. It is. Um, is it, it encroaching on the driveway? or? It, it, it's very robust. So yep. Where exactly is the 200 foot riparian zone? It's not on here. It's it's a pretty huge uh, the tree. The river is over here, tree. but I don't know. If the 200 under. foot's not on here. Do you see it? Here's the 100. So. I, I, so. I don't know if everything is in the riparian zone. I personally would like to replace it. So 200 would be out so here. Over here. Yeah. Yeah. So it's out here, over here. So it's in the outer of the 200. Right. Yeah. It's in the outer of repairing zone from 100 so to 200. So it's not so much right. on the corner of that spot? Because it's literally like right up against the um, the new sidewalks they put into. Oh, OK. It's very close. Um, so is, is, if it's a Norway spruce, is that a native species? No. Native to Norway. <laughs> <laughs> Every tree is native to somewhere, right? <laughs> um. uh, I'm in. I'll speak up and say I'm in favor of um, yeah. replacing that tree. Oh, yeah. A one yeah. to one replacement. Yeah. Yeah. That'd be fine. Wh where you would like to place it. So. Not probably close to the driveway. <laughs> no, no, I'd like to bring it a little bit more centered in that corner of the lot. So it's far enough away from the new sidewalk, far enough away from the porch and the driveway. Okay. Yeah. Chuck, so would you? So I'm going to add something. Um, so this, this is not prepared. So if we needed some manufacturer <coughs> specs to have that uh, put into the application, we could do that. Good. We'd be ready for the next meeting. Okay. Good. Would you be able to get some specifications for the pavers? I could touch Jack and see Great. what he was thinking Great. Yep. And um, yeah, to make tree. sure I beat that dead horse totally <laughs> to death, after much argument and debate, 10 meetings refused to give any pervious <laughs> credit for pervious papers. Because we revised the Act for Protection bylaw, and I tried to give credit to pervious papers in the Act for Protection District in 10 meeting voted to death. So, so I'm sorry. I'm Tell sorry me that in a, oh, 
a dumbed down minute. So there's zero credit for a zero permit. in the aquifer in protection the district. district. In the aquifer, in the aquifer but this district. isn't there's the aquifer. Zero okay. credit. So you would think for consistency, if we followed the wise advice of town meeting, we would give zero credit also to be consistent. It would be funny to have pavers pervious in one part of town and impervious in another. Was did the members of town meeting have um, <coughs> specs from manufacturers? My proposed amendment was to apply manufacturer specs to give credit for the for this right. manufacturer specification perviousness of the pavers in town meeting voted that day. I think there's a there's a lot of uh, rules for aquifer district property that don't apply to property that's not in the aquifer district. So right. I don't know why pavers couldn't be another one of them. I, I would like at some point for the town between engineering and and CPDC and CONCOM to come up with some consensus opinion on these and then see if we can convince town meeting because it's it's hodgepodge. It's mm -hmm. it's, it's yeah. inconsistent. It's yeah. the applicants don't know the rules they don't know what they're facing so if they go ahead and spend a lot of money for pervious pavers and then don't get credit from them it does not seem fair okay. do i make do i hear a motion to issue a negative what do we need to i move we issue whoa, 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 what 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 i think oh, we're, we're, I think we're talking we about continuing because we're going to add we're some stuff about the oh, pavers okay so we will continue this to well is the only thing we're adding the trains or something else and, the, and the it's specification it's the on the imperviousness of those uh yeah. well what are we going to do with those when we get them just include it uh, we're gonna we get two weeks to figure it out i you know, <coughs> we'll put it we'll put Thank it in you. somehow i don't think we is the is the applicant is it <coughs> is this uh are you in any sort any time restraints or issues on this project or i i did want to start as soon as I'm able to. I can't can't do any driveways until April first, so that's why I wanted to get everything cleared so I can get it all lined up and get it. You said April first. Yeah, yeah, so two weeks is good. Because I do have the engineering permit for the driveway move for the curb cut. Mm -hmm. Is that driveway work has to um, happen between April first and November first. Okay. So I'm trying to get it all in place so I can start. This so our next meeting is twenty third. So I just want to be clear that what the question is on the pervious pavers is when you say manufacturer spec, what does that mean? There are so usually sheets that tell you information on those pavers that you will be, be using in your patio and the walkway. If you mention it to Jack, he should know okay. exactly what he'll he'll be it. able to provide it's those. More or less like a, a okay. description of what they are and uh, okay. you know, very specifics of what they can do. Is there a certain minimum threshold that these pavers have? No, no, what, what no, we've no. said You'll is that you're, you're clear even if the perviousness yeah. of the pavers okay. is zero. It's not, gonna, it's not gonna affect you, we just want it okay. in our file. And we'd also probably like to know where you're going to plant, what you will be planting, the size of that, <coughs> and what type. The location, the the approximate location. Yeah. Replace the, the pine tree. Right, that that's correct, yep. And I, I don't want to speak for any other commissioner, but I have no problems or issues with this unit to make determinations for this as described today. I don't see any, any uh, issues from my standpoint. I would, I would concur. Chuck, I have, a, I have a question. On, a, on an RDA a negative determination, there's no appeal period. Am I right on that? No, you're wrong on that. Ten days. Is it ten days? So the 23rd, so that still puts you after a 10-day appeal period, you're still in good shape. So I, even even if we even if we issue a negative determination, this paperwork, that it's not getting signed tonight. Is that correct? No, he doesn't, no, he doesn't have it. It's not at the next meeting. So yeah, I mean, is there a reason to issue it before we before we get the the extra information since we're not signing it either? I'm I'm good. With that. But, I mean, we would have to sign it. We couldn't sign it until we do it in two weeks anyway. Right. If we, if we approved it tonight and signed it in two weeks, would the appeal period start tonight? No, wouldn't. I so, move so we what continue the hearing. Yeah, let's continue. I'll second. Well, it's not a hearing for an RDA. <coughs> yeah. 
I continue. We continue the matter. <laughs> <laughs> All those in favor? All those opposed? So does this mean I Oops. don't have the clearance quite yet? That's <laughs> correct. <laughs> yes. We are. Yes. Close. We are on our way. Right. We're very so close. close. All those abstained? Information and okay. tree information. That's the 23rd. That's correct. Yes. Yeah. And, and don't be upset about all this discussion of Kirby's papers. It really has nothing to do with your project. It's just an uh, 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 overarching issue on a number of other applications. So it doesn't affect your project. Okay. I'll get in touch with Jack and Jack. And, and those two issues of the tree and the paver, um, they shouldn't be big stumbling blocks for Jack at all. Okay. And with, can you cement, send it to you, like, email or whatever? Yep. Okay. The email would be great. Okay. Thank you Thank very you much. much. Thank, Thank you. Good night. Good night. Okay. This is after 710. Um, the next item on the agenda is a notice of intent, continuation, continuation for a notice of intent, 270-0656 Birch Meadow Park. Um, Anika, would you like to? You want me to read? Sure. Would. <coughs> Me too. Thank you very much. Um, so the public hearing for Notice of Intent 270-0656 Birch Meadow Park is now reopened and being conducted concurrently under the authority of the Massachusetts Wetlands Protection Act, Massachusetts General Laws Chapter 131, Section 40 as amended, and the Reading General Bylaws Section 7.1. The hearing will be conducted as follows. The applicant will go over uh, his proposal. The commission will receive reports from its administrator, advisors, and other town departments. The commission will address comments or and questions to the applicant. The public will then be given an opportunity to ask questions of the applicant, which should be directed to the chair. Please give your name and address before your comments and our questions are presented. There is an attendance sheet um, <coughs> at the entrance of the room, and we ask everybody present for as, if, as a matter of public record to please sign in. Um, and at this time, would the members of the Conservation Commission please introduce themselves, starting with Chuck. Uh, Chuck Taroni, the Conservation Thank Administrator. You. Aaron Curtis. Michael Flynn. Anita Skin, Vice Chair. Re Rebecca Longley, Chairman. Al Couillard. Jamie Mullen. And would you like to introduce yourself? Uh, sure, I'm, uh, I'm Chris Cole with the Town's Engineering Division. So um, what, we, what we have here is, um, you have in your packets, is the revised uh, plan that was submitted for the Birch Meadow uh, light pole installation. <coughs> And per, you, per the commission's request um, at the last meeting, um, we've, we've incorporated the new conduit locations um, onto this plan from what the, uh, the lighting contract was proposing. Um, it should, we, can, we show them coming into the, um, into the various buildings on the plan as it was requested. Um, we've altered the uh, buffer zone delineation around Casting Field area as it wasn't shown in the plan prior. Um, we've also added notations at the, at the uh, down here at the bottom of the plan, um, just saying that casings must be utilized um, during foundation installation for light poles 1, 2, 3, 6, 7, 8, and 16. Um, we've also added a notation saying that any concrete washout shall occur outside of the 100 foot buffer zone. Um, as requested, we altered the location of the conduit line over here on the left um, to reduce the extent of the excavation between the outfield fence and the resource area. Um, and we've also added a concrete barrier here in back of pole three um, that would be there temporarily just during construction and then be removed prior to um, prevent uh, <laughs> and then um, in George Zimboris's memo that you have in front of you um, we're also requesting a variance um, from the Town of Reading Wetland Bylaw to permit um, work to um, occur within a 35 foot of the <coughs> um, 
Can you, I'm new to the committee, but I'm not new to Birch Meadow, certainly. Okay. I spent many years at Birch Meadow. Um, can you show with your pointer yeah. what you're proposing for light? Is it lighting only? Yeah, it's, um, it's putting, uh, proposed new lighting poles. Um, so is this where the area that was former Imagination Station is in? I mean, there's probably, I think there's 22 poles, I believe, oh, wow. entirely going in here. So, I mean, there's pole one, pole two, pole three. There's some over here, um, some more over here. There's some more going in over here. Pole oh, meaning telephone? Uh, like pole, um, light poles. Light poles? Are they padded if they're abutting the plank, the baseball fields? I don't, I don't know if that's been discussed yet, but I mean, it, all the poles are going to be outside the playing areas, so, you know, that's... Quite a bit of you're running for a ball, right, you know, I've obviously. spent so many yeah. years at yeah. that, oh my goodness. And that's something that, you know, will be discussed, obviously. Yeah. How many poles total? 20, 22 or 24, something like they that. They might not build that at all, and they might run out of money before they get them all built. They probably yeah, will. Yeah, depending how the bids come in, we're not, you know, we'll only put up what we... Have funding for. And uh, so I used to live in that area, and I'm very familiar with it. The lighting, are they, are they proposing it's automatic, turn on, turn off, so um, they don't bother the abutting neighbors? Yeah, they'll, they'll, um, they'll, they'll come on um, when there's activity out there, like a, a baseball, softball game, and then they'll, they'll be turned off. I lived there for many years, <laughs> and I could see the lights from my house. So uh, at the last meeting, John Feudo was here, he's the director of recreation, and they're putting in a new system that's going to control all the lights and other things in town, and it didn't sound like it was foolproof, but at least it's going to be a, a step, a couple steps above what they're doing now. Mm -hmm. uh, we found out that it won't be shut off in rainstorms, oh. but it will. they should only be on when someone has rented the field. So it's not just timing anymore. It's and who, use. who has the ability to turn them on and off? I think it's... The uh, rec department. Is it the rec or Joe Huggins? In the well, well, probably John Pudo. Pudo, yeah. okay, yeah. So it's a, it's a little bit better. It's not mm. perfect. Well, well actually, Amy, if it makes you feel better, the lights that were on the tennis court Yes. Were okay. very disruptive to yes. the neighbors. We, played we put in <laughs> new new lights on the tennis court that are basically mm -hmm. the same designs, mm -hmm. and the light on the neighbors is a fraction of mm -hmm. what it was with the old lighting system. These are mm -hmm. high tech, shielded, directed, so it's mm -hmm. it's uh, less electricity, more light on the field, and less light on the neighbors. Mm -hmm. If the tennis court is a model, that mm -hmm. will be true here also. Are there any questions, other questions from <coughs> members of the commission? Jamie. Chris, are you aware of what George has committed you to? George says, the town, being you, since mm -hmm. George will be gone, is willing to provide suitable mitigation within the watershed if directed by the commission. Well, so, I mean, that's pretty wide open. Well, I mean, we're, we're willing to do whatever the Commission wants, but at the same time... I well, mean, how about if we daylight the entire stream through Birch Meadow? Is that... Well, I mean, I'm being facetious, well, but that's I, pretty open-ended. Well, what I was going to say is at the same time, I mean, we feel, too, that there really shouldn't be any mitigation required because where we're proposing these light poles, um, the area is already being disturbed on a daily basis anyway, you know, it's already being mowed, it's not... Right. No, I, I would agree with that. I, I just, that is so open-ended as to be unenforceable. Any mitigation directed by the commission. Do you, would you like them to propose? Yeah, I, I would feel better proposing something or a, accepting Chuck, whatever they... I wonder what Chuck wants. Uh, it's always handy to have mitigation hanging on. Um, the town did the I Belmont and Ivy Street um, in water main. Was us mitigation for that? EOA um, was their request, and there's nothing else. I, I know what I would like. 
if you go up the Abrajona all the way up there to Birch Meadow Drive, there's a stand of Phragmites. I would like that taken out. That would be my suggestion. Can you specifically show? Well, I, I, I don't know exactly where it is, but I can point approximately yeah. where it is. It's. Oh. It's around, it's around here somewhere. Yeah, There's a the stand of Frank Mighty's right on the bank of the Arbor Jonah, right on that, that area, kind of maybe more over here in this area. So it is how how wide about? Yeah, oh, it's, 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 I mean, it's 10, 12 feet. Huh? 10, 12 feet. So the, the width is, is less than that. The length might be 15 feet. So let's find out how much that is. And there's a carriage in the uh, river there. In the right. river. I want that out. Okay. That's, not, that's not mitigation. That's not mitigation. That's just that just has to come out of there. It's just good housekeeping. Yeah, it's good housekeeping. Maybe we could have Dana's properties take it out. It's probably there. Yeah. I'm gonna pick that up. Travel <laughs> park. So, uh, you know, there's that, that stand of Phragmite, and I think if you're going to propose something, you might as well propose a couple of things so the commission can understand or have a choice of, of what's, what you're offering. Um, because there might be more Phragmite. There might be more than you can handle. I mean, right? another, another mitigation is not, you know, stop mowing so close to the cattail mm -hmm. and, and give up another 20 feet. You could do something like that. Where? Are you talking about the cattail? But in Birch Meadow and Casting Field. Field, down where the out, it outlets. Yeah, I, I mean they've done a great job. But those cattails are still standing there now. They didn't mow them last spring, and it's they seeded, and it's it's real it's, it's real good. They've done a good job, even though we never did get Brian signs up there. There, urban urban myths now where they are. I, don't I know. thought we actually made those we made those signs and they were delivered to the dpw department anika did you have some questions um i did i had a couple questions and i'm sorry i couldn't make the last meeting mm -hmm. where a lot of this was discussed so forgive me if it's repetition but um um there's um i want to go into the issue of dewatering mm -hmm. during um installation of the trench and the lights mm -hmm. um, <coughs> In response to some comments I s that got sent to George J., George said no dewatering is expected for conduit installation. Mm -hmm. Instead, you're going to use a frack tank. Yes. Um, and he says, I'm not sure, maybe he just wrote it quickly. He says, indicated use of frack tanks will be required during pole foundation installation. So it makes it sound to me like the, for the conduits, there's no dewatering. Right. We don't expect to uncover any groundwater in the installation of the conduits, but when we put the found, install the foundations. Okay. Um, so when you're doing the conduits, it's not going to be greater than three feet below grade? Correct. Okay. Those are real surface conduits. Yeah. Okay. And the poles are, um, I went back to the methods. Um, so they're 36 to 48 inches in diameter and installed to depths of 12 to 19 feet. Um, now I don't know if uh, you were um, involved, well, knowledgeable of the project, um, of the light pole that's installed between the center of the track field and the river. Mm -hmm. um, it was probably during our previous administrator's work, but um, it collapsed. It collapsed <coughs> because they dewatered, um, and the the bank lost stability. Well, that's why um, we're requiring um, particular ones of these, certain ones of these uh, light poles. Um, when we're installing the foundation. They're going to have a steel casing. Okay. Um, any, any, Everything in the any, any, anything within resource the area. resource area. So you're going to drive the casing and then yeah. install the pole inside. Yeah, anything within okay. the buffer zone is okay. going to be have the steel casing. Okay, because especially if there's dewatering and then there's the Jersey barriers, mm -hmm. you know that's additional load yep. and yep. dewatering. Yep. <laughs> you, you don't want to be yep. pulling those. No, we'll be using out steel casing. Out of the, the park. <laughs> okay. Um, um, the other thing I wanted to talk about was what. Um, other members have brought up, which is the lighting. Mm -hmm. um, 
in terms of it's one thing I looked at today. Um, I looked into the how lighting um, affects the habitat, mm -hmm. and it seems like it's pretty irrefutable that um, lighting that's pointed upward or in any way dispersed upward will affect um, migratory birds, especially those that migrate at nighttime. And I guess there's a fair population of those. So um, I think it makes sense for us to require that lighting there, if it isn't already, is direct, is downward directed um, and targeted, as Jane was saying, like those um, tennis courts onto the playing area. I mean, a lot of a lot of that is going to be dependent upon, you know, the, the style the style of lights that are put up there, and I mean how they've already been designed, you know, because I mean the placement of these is very critical as to making sure there's even lighting on, on all the fields. Do you have the chart that shows the? You have it, right? The lighting. It, it, it had numbers all over it. That was right. one of those yeah. 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 yeah, that one, yeah. It's, it's yeah, like, yeah, yeah there, that. there you go. Was that presented at the last meeting? It I was. I did not get mm -hmm. that as a handout. Yeah. It was, I think it was, it was emailed. at the last meeting. It was emailed to us. I don't even know if it was emailed. Where do you guys want to look? So we went over Can you interpret this for me, Chris? Um... Well, from what I understand, I'm really <laughs> so basically. I'm gonna go over by the tennis courts. Yeah. yeah. The the higher the number, the more attempt. The, the, the higher attempt, the lumens. Say. Yeah, exactly. So if you see a zero or a point one somewhere, it's, it's really not no, It's negligible. Yeah. Exactly. Gotcha. But that's <coughs> that's that's horizontal lighting. That this that's at the ground. Photometric is right. for horizontal lighting. There's vertical lighting too, which you're talking about, right. Right. which is not shown on this. Right, and I mean, I think- um, These are taller than what's out there now. Yes. Right, I mean, um, the Mass Audubon- I mean they're pointing down? We hope so. Well, you hope they're pointing Unless down, they're putting softball up at about yeah. I mean, four, um, 400 feet. <laughs> they're all pointing to a specific yeah, spot so that, on the field. I thought that was a different plan that we had seen last, last week, where it was actually showing the point in the at which she had that they were pointing to. I okay. thought we had that plan. We I don't did. think it was this one. That we did two weeks ago, I think. That yeah. Might, yeah. There are some light pollution standards under LEED, mm -hmm. L-E-E-D, yeah. if you're familiar with it. Mm -hmm. um, and there are some standards in there that can be called on to be incorporated in. but. Uh, um, I'd like to hear from the rest of the commission about that. Um, I have here, and I'm happy to pass it out to other members, um, examples of what are acceptable light fixtures and what are not. Um, and here, Chris. Um, you know, shielded, targeted, you know, and I think for something that's going to be on for a good duration. So can I just are these, are these, Anika, are these um, sort of lights that you would put <coughs> well, it's, it's on our house or something? I don't know that well, I, know. I look at these. Yes. I know. Yeah, those aren't MESCO lights. I'm this not, is a different animal. I'm, yeah. Not, yeah. I'm not saying that these have to be the exact lights. I'm just passing it out as design. I mean, like they're, pro they're probably going to be very similar to what's at the, ten at the bank yeah. tennis courts now. Yeah, George said last week they'd be virtually the same. Yeah. George and yeah. John said they'd be virtually the same, same thing. thing. Well, if that's doing an effective job, keeping Anika, the if, I, if I could make a suggestion, down. if this would minimize your concern, that we ask the rec department or, or engineering after the first set of these lights are put in, they do some monitoring to confirm that their predictions are correct. And if they're they're not correct, then we make sure we adjust it for the next set of lighting they put in. That would make me feel better. Because um, this plan, this looks good to me. I don't know how accurate it is. I assume it's accurate. But, it but if we could monitor and confirm its accuracy, I'd feel a lot better. I don't, are you guys buying the lights four at a time? I don't know. I Like, like George said, I think we're going to put contract out for all of them that have 
deductions, you know, based on how the bids come in. Right. How about how the Bancroft tennis court lights lead, uh, have lead standards? Do you know that? I don't know that answer. Maybe that would We didn't that. require them. Well, I feel like there's a, there's a company, I can't remember the name, because they have them. Really Esco. Like Musco. Musco. I mean, they're a big company, they do this all over the country. Oh, yeah. They, they, they must have been asked this question before. Well, their headquarters is in, like, Iowa or something. And they control them from out there. Yeah, so I think Harry's right, though. Mesco will have the answer to this question they, if we ask know, him. I, I think we should ask them to give us some, some feedback on. I mean, maybe they've already got the lead certified. Some specifications on the lights. That we we want specifications on pavers. Let's get some specifications yeah. on the lights. It's not a bad idea. Well, this on the lights. Uh, well, I think I get let's try and paw through them anyway. Well, I like Jamie's ideas on the monitoring. And maybe I, th I feel like so it's going to be too late if we put them yeah, in and then monitor them. Let's yeah, but we're, I, let's answer it up front. The way George described the contract is they're going to have deductions. So they're right. going to do as much as they can all at once. Right. Exactly. Right. And, exactly. But I, I think what George said, and, and correct me if I'm wrong, mm -hmm. that they wanted to get in all the electrical work under the first phase of the contract. Mm -hmm. yes. Because once so they're right there setting that up, that. so that's going to take a big chunk of the money. So then the lights themselves will come in 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 uh, in You had in priority phases. as well. Where were you putting in the lights first? I can't remember what what George said on it, it was more towards Imagination Station. Those two. Yeah, and I think oh. Castine was oh. last, and Morton Field yeah. was next to last. Right. If I remember yeah. correct. And from a habitat standpoint, Castine Field is probably our largest concern. Mm -hmm. Hmm? No, they're not. They're not. You're not doing lights around Castine they're Field. No. Field. Oh, I thought those that you were replacing. No, no, those we're lights. not. All we're doing no. is running the feed to oh, the okay. lights underground. Okay. So those existing lights will or stay at Castine. Yeah, exactly. Yes. Mm -hmm. I don't have any more questions. That, that one question. It's not, we're, we're out of time, so just no, no, don't. No, no, no we we talk. ignore the clock totally. <laughs> well, after you hear this, you're going to want to move on, but. So when I was there looking at it, the one thing I noticed that would be great from a mitigation standpoint is get rid of the culvert in the middle of the field and turn it into a stream again with some bridges. That, that would be something. We, we've talked about that for a decade. That's right, figured. That so just creates more of a liability, you know, for the town. I mean, because now you have this open culvert in the middle of the park. Well, it's That's collapsed a couple times. Open, open mitigation as much as you want it. That's why we wanted as much mitigation as we we should accept it with the uh, yeah with the open <laughs> mitigation. Well, I mean, I'm not I, again. I mean, we can spend all night on it. So I just wanted to get it on the table because I think as we're thinking about this field complex, and you're talking about digging it up, then maybe we don't do it this time. But maybe the next time. We'll it, if I could just shed a little historic light on this, not oh, that's not <laughs> lumens. Um, we did a master plan for for Birch Meadow Complex, and we debated at length daylighting that stream and we tried it from many angles and many perspectives and we weren't able to come up with a scenario that we could daylight that stream. Not to say we shouldn't continue to try, but that master plan which has been approved by the um, committee that wrote it, of which I was a member, as well as the selectmen and ultimately TAN meeting. Um, that stream is not daylighted and the area over the stream is in integral to the uh, recreational use of the field. Our, again, historic perspective, our idea was to try and do some stream and habitat improvement on the northwest side of uh, Birch Meadow Drive rather than try and reclaim recreational area for habitat because there's a lot of potential between Birch Meadow Drive and uh, and uh, Lowell Street to, for, for habitat improvement, habitat um, uh, restoration. Quest, question about the Birch Meadow redevelopment, and I know this is a little bit off topic, but um, bear with me. Is, was, was the Imagination Station area proposed, what was the plan for that on the Birch Meadow project? If, I, if I remember correctly, and I wish John was here, but um, we the, the original idea was to build a lift pole court. Um, that didn't quite make it, so we had a smaller um, play area. 
I believe was the okay. plan, um, smaller than the, the old imagination station. I mean, you know, some some mitigation could be some additional constructed wetlands next to the existing open channel near imagination There station. should be space for that. I mean, there, there already is some there. Um, yeah, there's some, years ago we right. For part of the field, the football field, if I yeah, remember. So that's correctly. increased storage. It's increased habitat. All right. Um, it's also in a great location if you want to teach kids about ecology and environment. Oh, good point. From Coolidge, they could go on a field trip across right the street. We need to keep the cross country track team from running through there, though. That was one of our objectives. Remember, we yeah. want to put those boulders. Yeah. Any questions? Any further questions from the commission members? Chuck? Um, I don't have any questions, but you guys have some questions. So, uh, you want to know if uh, the lights lead certified and if um, they can, you can have a plan that has vertical lighting on it and um, talk about some, uh, you know, define the mitigation, uh, three different types. And uh, so the commission can choose or accept all three, uh, whatever they want to do. And one of the proposals is the uh, Fragmite on Birch Meadow Drive. So there's some additional information we're asking for. Any questions from the public? Do you have any comment? I'm not sure if we're asking if it's LEED certified. I think we. I guess we can do both. We can ask lead certified and we can ask for the specifications for the lights and some sort of chart like this so we can see uh, the vertical the vertical uh, lighting situation. So we're going to So this is this will be continued. I think we're getting close though. Thanks for making those changes, Chris. Mm -hmm. So would this go on the next meeting? Uh, we have it on the agenda. I don't know if you have enough time, Chris, to provide the information within two weeks. I'll have to talk to George okay. tomorrow. What, when do you want to put it out to bid? As soon as we can. As soon as we get our order conditions, we want to get up to bid. So, you know, the time is of the essence. I I make a motion we continue to the next meeting. Second. All those in favor? Abstained? <laughs> okay. Thank you very much. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Next on the agenda. Agenda. Uh, agenda. Is agenda. There's a request for determination of applicability for one general way. At 54 lot one, Jimmy Shaw and Venus. Associates, following Monday's site visit, sorry to miss you. I have a new narrative and a new plan. No point in unfolding the old one. You said you were shopping at Market Basket. Is that what you said? Yeah. <laughs> Uh, could somebody turn those lights on so we can... Are you going to be using the board or the screen? Thank you. Oh, well, I don't have anything on the screen, so I'll go with one. We, uh, we've talked about this several times. I've shown you the same plan several times. What I have done in preparation for tonight's meeting is to uh, pull up the section of the drawing where the activity is taking place. Doesn't seem to be any use or value in you looking at a whole lot of parking spaces that aren't going to change, and although they have to do with this project, really aren't germane to the work we're proposing. Simply put, this is deferred maintenance. 
This is work, by and large, that should have been done over the course of several years, in fact, a decade or more. Back in the day, there was an order of conditions issued for activity here, constructing a detention basin. Perhaps it was a repair of a detention basin. It's not clear to me, but there was a detention basin designed and installed here, a Hayes Engineering design that incorporated a dike, the other side of which sort of fares into the bank of the stream. Travis Here's the the basket right here. I've argued before the road that the fast. entire ditch coming through this site oh, is a drainage is feature that serves yeah, not only the parking lot, here. but adjacent roads and infrastructure all the way out to Route 28, out to the mm -hmm. main street. And Indeed, passes underneath the stop and shop parking lot of Walker Brook Drive. It is primarily, although it has other functions, of course, under the Wetlands Act, but it is primarily an urban drainage conduit, highly densely developed. So, why am I here? I want my client to be able to maintain the infrastructure on his site so that it doesn't become part of the sediment load in the stream. I want him to stabilize vegetation and soils in proximity to the north and south banks of the stream. I want him to prevent poplars that are growing in the bank from destabilizing either of the banks of the stream, and most particularly, I want the poplars off the back of the dike, where they're likely, in due course, to get tall enough to lever the bank out. We've had a couple of looks at this. Uh, most recently, I came down the other day and took a look at the discharge from the existing basin. There's an array of pipes at various elevations and with various size openings. They're designed to manage high intensity storms. The basin fills up, the pipes release water at a measurable or at least a controlled rate. And the problem here is, of course, when water comes out of those pipes under heavy loads, it scours. There's a notch through the bank of the brook here. It's nothing really big. There is a tree next to it that isn't leaning yet, but in the course of this work, that's something that is considered routine maintenance. If the dike were being mowed on a regular basis, by now the mower would have fallen into that rut and it would have been repaired long since. It's simple, good housekeeping to keep your drainage features well maintained so that they are well maintained. So, it's a phased process now. There's an area, mostly multi-flora rows and uh, honeysuckle up here along the property line. The abutters are mowing out into the electric easement, this half of which side. belongs to my client. It's an okay. easement, but there's fee underneath it. And the abutters regularly mow part of this allegedly wild area over onto our property it needs to be restored to natural vegetation. Yes? Excuse me, sir. Uh, how d is it their property? No. They have no, it's, the, it's our property. They come over the property line in the course of mowing around their landscaping. And there's a strip along this side of the property which I represent as woody vegetation. In fact, there's five feet of lawn over there that's completely blind. It has nothing to do with our site. It is continually and regularly mowed by the abutter. It needs to be posted. It needs to be restored to native vegetation. Mm -hmm. The intent here in this no disturb area was to allow the establishment of native vegetation. There's no native vegetation in there. Not a damn thing. It's all multi-flora rows and honeysuckle, and the understory basically is plastic bags and pot cans. Needs to be cleared out. I have recommended to my client that that be completely cut down to grade and that it be replaced with a wildflower meadow. Why a wildflower meadow? Why is that better than woody vegetation? Excuse me, it, isn't yes. that outside of the buffer zone? This? Yeah. Most of it is, yes. But it's posted no disturb. There's little, little posts going all the way around it on both sides with little medallions on top of them. It needs to be disturbed. It needs to be planted to something that can be maintained in a more or less natural state, but that doesn't present all of the invasive species that are present in this neighborhood. We can't keep multi-flora rows out of the site. 
what we can do is we can prevent it from propagating by mowing. Now, what's in it for you? Why would you want us to mow the area? Well, quite simply, you put in a wildflower meadow mix in here, you just cut down all the invasive vegetation, you put in a wildflower meadow mix, and you mix it with some winter rye or annual rye so that it'll stabilize real quick. But over the course of the next six or eight months, one growing season, perennial wildflowers will take root. What do you do then? Every year, sometime after Thanksgiving, sometime before the end of winter, you mow it. You either mow it in late November or you mow it in early March. Before anything's growing, you just take out the woody material. If uh, honeysuckle or uh, uh, <laughs> bittersweet has sprouted in there, you're going to get it. You're going to cut it back. Every year you're going to cut that back. doesn't bother the perennial wildflowers. They come up after you've mowed. But you're getting rid of all of the invasive species that come in here, gather trash, provide no habitat value, and basically just lead to, well, you know, that's the no man's land over there, so everything on this side of it must be our property. This is how boundaries move. This is one. This is just basically a wildflower meadow substituted for a tangle of multiflora rows and weeds. Here on the North Bank, area two, similar situation. There's a good size stand of poplars getting up toward four, four and a half inches diameter breast height. That's the point at which poplars start to topple. We got an awful lot of them in there. They're growing close together. It's a clone, basically. If we cut poplars here, and we don't cut poplars up along the property line, then that's the vector where the poplars come back in. So I'm suggesting once again, we remove the poplars where they destabilize the bank. We replace them with something that can be managed in an open condition, kept clean. We don't have rubbish flowing into the brook because there's no place for it to hide. And we can get at the brook to see whether there is imminent failure along the bank, whether there is one tree growing up and, again, threatening to lean and take it out. What are you proposing you replant? There's in a spec area two. in the narrative. It's two pages. There are basically there are two options. One is a little bit more green. The other one is a little bit more showy. Uh, they vary in price because the showy plants are more expensive. It's not a cheap mix. It's a very very dense sort of subshrub layer. It uh, it's it's not an easy thing to walk through this this wildflower meadow. It generally tends to be about three to four feet deep. And it's not a terribly pleasant place to be. For one thing, there are a lot of bees in it. And for another, it's uh, there are some thorns on some of those plants. The idea here is that you plant this and you maintain it by mowing out of the growing season. Once a year, you go and you just take all the woody material down and compost it. Yes? Excuse, excuse me. Um, so, Mr. Dick, you are a wetland scientist, um, and I guess I've got a couple of questions just right off the bat. Can you describe what are the areas subject to protection that you're going to work within? Sure. Bank. You're going to work within the bank? Yep. Okay. And are you going to alter those areas? only to the extent that we're going to manage vegetation on the bank to maintain the integrity of the bank. That's so, the performance so, standard for bank. So under the regs, destroying vegetation is altering. Under the so regulations, based, based the maintenance of an artificial sir, bank. I would have to issue a positive determination for your RDA. Well, then are we done? Is the rest of the commission leaning in this direction? We've been talking about this for a year. If I have to file a notice of intent, please save us all some time. Tell me I have to file a notice of intent. I'd like to hear the rest of the presentation before I uh, before I would vote. I don't mean to seem impatient, but we've been over this. I stood here last year and I talked about this. It was different, though. You had a different proposal last year. I did. It was a yes. much more sweeping proposal. <coughs> and it's been downscale because it's too expensive, plain and simple. But these are things we have to do. These are things we have to do to maintain infrastructure that has already been reviewed, approved, conditioned, and signed off on by the Conservation Commission. 
there's a certificate of compliance for the order that was issued for this if I'm, system. If I may, Madam Chair. But however, sir, your, your client respectfully has not been following the maintenance protocols, which is why we're here That's right. in the first place. That's right. So, you approached you know, me to get a determination as to whether maintaining the site constitutes alteration of wetlands, and I maintain that the, it does not. There's a design artificial stormwater management structure here. It's not just this basin. It's the whole site. It's all an exquisitely designed drainage structure that is working, for better or worse, to the extent that it gets maintained by the abutters. Most of the abutters, for perfectly good reasons, don't maintain it. What are those reasons? Expense, restrictions, can't work in the 25 foot no disturb zone. Got all of these postings around here where you're not supposed to cut anything. Well, when invasives move into that area, what on earth do you do? You go to the commission and you ask them to do what you should have been doing all along. What you can't do because you're prohibited from doing it. You see the dilemma? I'm not proposing to go into a resource area and start hacking down vegetation. We tried that last winter. It was a $147,000 filing fee. We can't do that. Can't afford to do it. That's but more than the budget. I don't budget think cutting board. down all those trees, sir, was part of your maintenance plan. It was. That was floodplain. And the trees were beginning to compromise the bank of the stream. The stream and, and the floodplain were in the trees. Alright, uh, so we're, yeah, but we're talking about something that doesn't, isn't being proposed. Correct. No, that's right. We're talking that's about lodging. That's another story. Yeah. Right. <clears throat> this is a very, very much reduced process. And this really relates to the integrity of the banks and maintenance of the site. And so when I say maintenance of the site, I mean maintenance of the site for wetland interests, wildlife interests. So in, uh, you're proposing the same thing in Area 3 as Area 2? Same thing in Area 3 as okay, Area 2. How about area, if you could just touch, on, touch quickly on Areas 4 and 5. 4 and 5, easy, real quick too. Area 4, there's an established maintenance protocol for the basin. It has been done on occasion in the past. It's like every other detention basin in Reading or anywhere in Eastern Mass. It isn't done as often as it should be done, and it isn't done with any supervision or diligence, particularly. Generally speaking, they will clean out a four bay because it's easy to reach. And cleaning out a four bay arguably is a good thing, but over the course of a decade or two decades, you also have to go in and clean the detention basin. And of course, whenever you do either one of these things, you got to put up erosion control at the mouth of the basin so that when you kick up the silt, it settles back in the basin. It doesn't just flush out into the stream. So in Area 4, mm -hmm. you're area proposing four to clean basin. out the detention basin? Indeed. Okay, in Area 5. Area 5, that's the frag. Okay. We so it's not around. it's not the created wetland, it's just the frag. Well, it is, it is a created wetland. There's a created wetland in there in the frag, and that's my dilemma. I right. can't solarize the frag because there are native plants in there. Okay, so all you're proposing in Area 5 is uh, removing the Phragmite. Cut and dab, and then selectively cut once or twice a season for the next few years. John, John, in the detention basin, is that, do you have a liner in that? I don't believe it is liner, no. I believe it is. No. I didn't design it. I okay. There is a liner. Okay. What about the four bay? Does the four bay have a liner as well? Because I'm sorry if you could introduce yourself. Uh, James Shaw with Davis Properties. I believe there's a liner in the four bay and then covered with riprap. Okay, so the so the <coughs> riprap would would protect any kind of movement of or removal of sediment out of that area. I'm just I'm a little concerned if you. It's all the four bays almost full sediment. I yeah. think yeah, I know, but I know, if you if yeah. you've got a liner, I'm just a little concerned about going in and go. ripping it. <laughs> that would be my concern too. I don't know what's in there, but whatever it is, we've got to go to the spec and we've got to maintain it accordingly. And what's the co comment about removing sediment in the detention basin the last time you, you came? The detention basin has a lot of adventitious vegetation growing in it. That's not necessarily a bad thing, but over near the outlet, right. where the velocities really drop in low water conditions, mm -hmm. that's where the fines start dropping out. 
and after a while you get shoaling. And also, by the way, you get an awful lot of rubbish piled up against the outlet. Whenever it rains, that rubbish flushes out the pipes. You were talking about the rut that's on the other side? Mm -hmm. Yep. No. I think it's. No. I thought the rut was on the bank on the, in area bank, two. Yeah, uh, area three, I think. Area three. Yeah, it's, and on this drawing, there's a little red fleck right about here. So what's the plan for that? And basically, we, when we get in there and we start cutting poplars and clearing the embankment, we will replace, it's basically the outlet armory is six inch minus stone. Mm -hmm. I would either use six inch minus stone or maybe I will use 12 inch minus stone because that's just going to erode again. So have you gone back to the original design drainage plan? I haven't. The reason I'm specifying six inch minus stone is because that's what's there. If that's not what was specified, we would go to the spec and build whatever so was specified. We made a site visit on Monday, and my impression, when I, what we observed while we were out there, what I observed while, while I was out there was it looked like the silk fencing just never came out. Right. Oh, you're absolutely right. There's silt fence all over the place. It was buried. A foot and so half of silt. My, my impression was that that silt, that that area was just really silted in behind mm -hmm. the silt fencing, mm -hmm. and that it wasn't that it, it you know, it, it just filled up, you know, as it would in a storm, it filled up, filled up until it broke through at some location. I, you know, I, my understanding would be that that's not supposed to be a bank right there. That, that's supposed to be a channel going directly in. I, I wouldn't know that without looking at the drainage. That line. would that would be a matter of going to the design. If that's silt, which I don't think it is, then it should be removed. And essentially, so you think there was an open system. channel that's going from the yes. tension basin to the stream? Absolutely. Yes. It comes, it goes it comes pipe, right from the pipe. Daylight, yeah. and then it, it's very clearly not the same elevation. It, it goes up and then comes back down, mm -hmm. and it looks like it just silted in at the silt. Silt fencing did its job, and it. Hold back all the silt yeah. and just filled in. So we would want sure. that open channel restored. Well, we would want it to be how it was supposed to be designed. Right. Um, I mean, uh, uh, yeah. So I, I, I think there's an understanding of what this was originally designed to be that needs to be accepted. Yeah. Well. I want to disagree with you there. Uh, I look up and down the stream, or up the stream from that area, which is right at the head wall of a culvert. If I look up the stream in this direction, the bank of the stream all the way up to the next culvert is at the same elevation. So if there's silt coming out of the basin and it's accumulating at the exit from the basin, it would have to be accumulating all the way along this bank. They're no, all no, the same no, elevation. No. It's the outlet from the detention basin. And that outlet is, is set lower. back from the stream. I That's think correct. they cut a basin and it filled and it with stone. And it's lower than the, the silt. It is. I, I think they so cut a basin and filled it with stone as a velocity reducing device. <coughs> it was supposed to spill over the bank. It has eroded through the bank. I it, that's it, what you're going to find happen. But I'd have to see the spec to do that. I, yeah, I mean, you I'm not a convinced me that plans. that was designed yeah. to go through that elevation. It could it, could have been a hole right through the bank. Yeah. It, it, Doesn't look like that's what it was. But can can we go back to resource area, John? Which, um, which I, I want to know from um, the this the North Bank section two, right? In in section two and three, mm -hmm. is that um, perennial stream? No, it's not even mapped. Okay. Perennial streams behind the building. And then, what about is there floodplain in there? There's floodplain yes. here on the other side of the entrance road. Up in here, this is all filled land or high land originally, I think it was filled, and uh, it's too high to be floodplain. The floodplain's all over here in the west. There's floodplain on the stop and shop property because we had to install that grass swale mm -hmm. to, um, to accommodate, here. right there, yeah. to accommodate the, the floodwaters. So the, the area on the other side of the access road, uh, General yeah. Ave, yeah. Yeah. that's, that's Vegetated wetland. Yeah, it sure is. That's okay. that's so really nice floodplain. Yeah. Floodplain and ordering vegetated, and vegetated wetland. wetlands. They function. Okay. Yeah, they function hand in hand. Out of so still, the underlying question is: We all agree the work needs to be done. Does it need to be done under an RDA or a notice of intent? Well, 
If, if I could just see if I understand, area one is outside of the buffer zone, so that shouldn't no, be any. mostly outside the buffer mostly zone. Mostly outside. About, like about two thirds of it is beyond the buffer zone. I, I, I and so I, I, I don't think that's an issue. No. Area four is just cleaning. If there's any, yeah. there's, there's no line here of where the, where the buffer zone is. Right well, it's 100 feet from the bank of the stream. Which is five inches on a plane, comes through here. Yeah. That that wetland line is a relic from the last notice of intent that was filed, which was filed when they built the basin. I mean, I just noticed the new wetlands aren't in it. The I mean, this doesn't the replication seem like area. Replication right. Area right. It doesn't seem like that's ne this is necessarily an accurate wetland line. But that bank, don't you think that's pretty obvious that that's the wetland line for that bank between areas two and three? Yes. I think, I think that's the center of the channel. Right. 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 And then 100 feet off of that. A lot of the revised regs, the banks actually are banks now. Right. That, that's old school, the center of channel for intermittent streams. Now they, now they actually have banks. They Imagine like to that. have banks? Mm -hmm. yeah. Awesome. So the, the activity in area one is either outside of the buffer zone or within the outer buffer zone and we're only talking about removing vegetation area four is cleaning and reconstructing to original design the detention basin area five is restoring the created wetland by removing phragmites so in my mind the activities in areas one, four, and five would clearly qualify for an RDA. So it seems to me the issues regarding RDA versus NOI are areas two and three. John, on <coughs> would, area would we agree five, with that? I would agree. I think potentially part of one. Uh, line, but yes, I would for the most part. I would agree. So if we could then figure out what's going on two and three, then we'll... Two and three is a... Removal of vegetation. There, two and three is a good chunk of this work. And it's removal of all, most everything. There's, there's a red maple there. I don't know. I know when we met with Mr. Shaw, yeah. there were pink flags on your... Um, we did flag the red maple, <laughs> yeah. And you, and you flagged a bunch of other things, too, but... It was unclear to us, you know, he indicated, well, we'd like to cut it all. Um, but I guess the outlet to the detention basin um, that Mr. Flynn was describing, um, it's unclear to me what you really want to do there. And I know you keep saying that it's, oh, it's already been a previously, uh, you know, conditioned uh, with a, order of conditions previous, but nobody can come up with these things, so <coughs> I'm a little concerned about... Well, I can come up with the plans, I just, you know, I didn't incorporate them into my drawings because they're already of record. They came down here, they filed a plan, it was approved, they did it, they closed it out, but the system still needs to be maintained, it's in failure, and at some point or another, a system like this that's in failure fails catastrophically. So at some point, let us say, for instance, uh, this was all I was interested in, was the maintenance of the detention basin, and you wanted me to file a notice of intent, I would forthwith file a notice of intent and an emergency, sir, because I think it's that serious a consideration to have a five-inch poplar growing on an artificial embankment. That's there to retain the water in the basin. If it fails, then the basin doesn't function anymore. In the same way, if the basin washes out part of its velocity reduction apron, whatever the design was, restore the design. That's, that's all I want to do. I want to go back and repair this in accordance with the already approved design. Now, if there's something funny with the approved design, I got to wonder how to get approved, how to get a certificate of compliance after the fact. Do we want to discuss that and change it now? We can do that. 
but it, it just seems counterproductive. This kinda, seems to be a pretty good detection. Kind of why it didn't why it didn't work. I think the only reason it didn't work was it wasn't maintained. maintained. Well, I think that's the point. So, so we issued an order of conditions. Issued an order, which included 20 years ago. No, when 20 years. How many years ago? What, when they redid, when the market basket was put in, was it been 10 years? And, and that required a maintenance plan, is that correct? Maintenance yes. plan was not followed. And so, do we know what the maintenance plan said? Yes, we yeah. do. And, and we do. Well, we have it written down in the file, I would assume. Yeah. And, and so I'm sure Hayes Engineering has it if we don't. The standard maintenance plan. So that it doesn't get into cleaning out the detention base. That's okay. So that's not part of it. I have you, have you read it, Chuck? My question is, if, if the maintenance yeah. plan called for, us, called for regular removal yeah. of trees, mm -hmm. mowing, then I think it just comes down to an interpretation of, well, if you didn't follow the maintenance plan for the last 10 years, is this really maintenance now that you've got how much all the trees are. You know what I mean? That's that's I that's the completely. thing I'm wrestling yeah. with. And, and, and you know, whether it's a poplar or a maple or an oak that are referred to in the site visit, but they all pose the same risk of falling down and tearing up the bank. Well, except that we're, we're talking about oaks or maples. We're talking about oaks oh, or maples. So they're not even on the okay. yeah. Right. So really, that's my question is, have, has, the, has the situation on the ground here changed to such a degree because the maintenance plan wasn't followed that we now have a wetland where we would have had or buffer zone or whatever it is. Whereas well, previously if it had been mowed. Well even if it was mowed, it would still, still be it. in the buffer zone today. They'd yeah, be mowing in the buffer right. today. If yeah. they followed the plan, they'd be mowing in the buffer today. They'd be but mowing right on those banks for the last ten years. But as I understand it, if after ten years you don't disturb the property then it becomes a habitat again. Well, we can't allow it to be. Well, That's what I feel like is, is the issue is, and maybe I'm over-interpreting the whole thing. Well, the, the detention thing. basin is not a resource area. The resource area is that stream in the adjacent bank. Well, is the stream a resource area? Yes. yes. Yeah. Between the two banks? Yes. Right. Yes. yes. As are the banks. So it's not currently that? It's not perennial, but it is a stream, and it does have Well, I, I mean. Yes. It was mapped at one time. I don't know why it didn't show up on this this well, I, drawing. I mean, I guess that's 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 history. I mean, the question is, if it's if it should have been maintained and it hasn't, it's become something other than what the original plan said it would be. So now you've got trees with all kinds of habitat in them. Okay. So can we can we two phase this? Can yeah, could, could I, we? I, well, I think it, I think we owe it to our, our resident to. Some clarity on what the rule is. Um, and at the same time, I think, I think my, I don't know, my feeling on the work that I guess should have been done, I, th I think it's more than, than that. I think now we're going in and you're doing some work on that outlet to the detention basin. Um, I would like to see some kind of a detail on that. I mean, just to say that I'm going to remove the silt, I'm going to throw in some riprap. Usually we look for engineering design, and, and is there a potential of this affecting the resource area at the bank? I concur that it, it would, and, you know, under the regulations, that would be a notice of intent, not a request for determination of applicability. And, and just to kind of also pick on what Harry's talking about. This is 10 years of deferred maintenance. And so it's, you know, I think um, Mr. Dick has, has clearly stated what a maintenance is. You know, you go in in the fall and you, you take out the woody vegetation. You've got, you know, based on what's being described to me, as I understand it, is we've got way past that point of what this is. We don't even know if it's well, we, yeah. I feel like we're speculating. In, in point of well, fact, there I, I, may have been no vegetation management in the stormwater management plan. It's quite possible ten years ago that wasn't incorporated. Excuse in the me. Plan. So in, in two thousand and seven, this uh, the old order of condition shows uh, New England Environmental had to do a uh, yearly uh, evaluation of the property. In two thousand and seven, this was exactly what they want now: grass. And a mowing plan 
and uh, constructed wetland and a replication area. So I don't know what happened between there and 2016. They just didn't do any maintenance. And prior to that, there was no detention pond there. So 2003, Google Earth shows that there's no detention pond, just a stream. And it only goes back, in this case, to 2000 or 1995, and it just shows a stream. Right. Chuck, to make sure I understood or heard correctly what you said, in 2007, when that detention basin was put in, there was no vegetation on either the north no woody, or woody vegetation on the north or south bank. No woody vegetation. Right. Which that, it, that's just from pictures, and it's they, they didn't. Well, so that, I'm guessing yes. That that's consistent with when my memory. When they built that sure. detention basin, there was nothing going on the banks of the stream. No woody vegetation. No. Um, we don't have ground shots. You have aerials. We have uh, we have some shots from uh, New England Environmental oh, on their reports. Okay. So actual site photographs. Good. That's consistent with my memory for what that's worth. Yeah, it looked really nice, as a matter of fact. And we did, in uh, defense of the commission, as we were on that site, an adjacent site for other purposes, we did note that that detention basin was not being cleaned and uh, asked the applicant to, um, to, to adhere to the cleaning and maintenance of that detention basin and looks like we didn't follow up on those requests. But it has been deteriorating over the last 10 years. Jamie, were they supposed to um, submit um, I can't plan? remember. It would be in the maintenance report. It would be in the order of conditions. I cannot remember. It's like a 13 or 14 year old order of conditions. And there was a few. I, I have think some of it. So if it was yearly and there was three, I would okay. expect that would be more than enough. Yep. Two to three. For what it's worth, it worked very, very well when first installed. As evidenced by all the sediments in there. Well, as far as details go, then, I mean, we, we have details in the record. There's the original design on the plan or record. That is what I would propose to restore out here. Go back, put it back the way it was 10 years ago. John, I have one, one um, not quite related to what we've been talking about, but Section 5, Area 5, mm -hmm. the Phragmites, is that the area that's actually in the upland? Yeah. Yeah, the frag is growing down the bank into the wetland right. irrigation area. Did we notice some more Phragmites further to the north along the back of the market basket parking lot towards that berm that goes out to the... This way? Yeah. yeah, goes out to the uh, tent out there. The time to manage it is when there's only a little bit of it. Yeah. And what you do is you find a landscaper who recognizes Phragmites and you target the frag. You license pesticide applicator, he follows the cutters, mm -hmm. he dabs every stem, and then every time they go to the site, they go to that area and kill the Phragmites that sprouts again. And that's why we wanted um, DPW to get rid of that fag, frag as comp mitigation for the, um, the bus stop, but they never did it. And we also noticed that there was some, some trash at the concrete head wall. Oh, yeah. Yeah. <coughs> Any questions from the public? No. Okay. The questions are for us. Questions? Okay. All right. What yes, gonna, I'm what sorry. Are we do? That's a, just as a comment, Jody Hayward from Dana's Properties. Um, I just you know, wanted to ask if there's any consideration. It seems like there may be some areas you're willing to allow the RDA, and I didn't know if it was worth, you know, maybe we talked about at the last meeting having some conditions. Is it worthwhile to see if there's an agreement on those and see what we can do to move forward? That's a good question. I was kind of thinking that myself. Maybe we can RDA uh, one, four, one, and five. four, and five in notice intent two and three. The way we can, through the notice of intent, we also can monitor one, two, and five. And uh, severs nice when we're when we're going out there to go and check on that. I, I guess so. Well, let me. I, so I just want to before you vote, I was going to tell you that. Um, so if it was a notice of intent, we would require a mitigation for this work, and you know they obviously would have um, all three covered. Uh, an operation and maintenance plan. Uh, 
more information on the cutting, a cutting and planting plan. It's hard to understand if they've done things correctly unless we know what they're doing. We're looking at plans that are doctored from the original project, so there's no accurate lines or accurate um, plants on there. It's a general, very conceptual plan that we're looking at here, and um, there, it's missing detail. It's uh, there's no control, it's loose, it's conceptual, and I know it was brought up once before that if there was a problem we could use an enforcement order, but it doesn't make any sense to go into a project and knowing that if it goes bad that that's our only option because it, with an enforcement order it does take the owner to um, actually care that, he has, that he's under enforcement. And um, I think that uh, these people had an excellent plan uh, up to 2007, and they can do it again. But I'm not sure by just letting them loose will achieve the goal that everyone wants. So that's all I wanted to say. Well, I think they have the right to maintain that detention basin, right? Without our permission. That's not in the uh, it's not in the in the buffer zone. And we didn't say that now. It's not a well, not uh, he said it. I don't know. Yeah, I'll jump in and, and shoot myself um, out of here. This I'm is asking. I mean, zone. you said that at the last meeting. Yeah, this this is in the buffer zone, but it's still it's an artificial detention base that we're obligated to maintain. It. We're not I mean, going right I to mean, maintain. Think it. We're that, supposed to maintain. It. Think of that detention basin that uh, was in one of Al's development. Where the guy came in and said it's uh, it started the road and there's a hole there. I want to come in and fill it up, and we said fine, no RDA, no nothing, just go take care of it. And that detention basin, that guy's in there and mows it every uh, every week. So I don't see why we can't allow the same level of maintenance in this detention basin we allowed in that one. My opinion is that this is a completely different level of maintenance. Yeah, it is. Well, but if you incorporate clearing the dike, it is. Yeah, I'm not talking about clearing the dike. I'm talking about getting the silt out of the tension basin. And if the outlet structure is uh, failed or compromised, they should fix it. Well, what's, what's the plan on doing that? They don't have a plan. I mean, we don't even know if John's going to be there on site when this work is taking place. I mean, it's those kind of things that haven't been asked yet. I mean, I would feel comfortable if John was there during the whole time or someone from his office for that part. How are they going to do it? Are they digging it out? Are they getting a back truck? Um, there's all that, uh, there's all that uh, silt fence that's right in the bank. It's part of the bank now. When they pull that out, that's going to make the soil loose. What time of, what time of year are we going to allow them to do this work? They ha that hasn't been proposed. It hasn't been talked about. There's there's no means and methods that we're looking at. I mean, certain, I, I mean, I agree. If you want to do the uh, four bay, that well, seems reasonable. So let me ask you a question. Go ahead. Go ahead. We're only talking about those kinds of questions because the maintenance schedule wasn't followed. Because if this thing had been mowed every year and things were maintained on a regular basis, we're talking about those things for two reasons. Because we don't want this applicant to come back in another seven years and say the same thing. <coughs> so hopefully this time the, the order of conditions will be written in a way that it can be enforced and it, the, the goals that we set will be met and it will never happen again. But with an RDA, it, 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 it doesn't even show the seriousness I mean, this applicant isn't even showing that he's serious about this project by presenting it with an RDA. He's just asking the question, is this project located in the buffer zone or the resource area, and is it likely to alter the, the, either one of those? That's precisely correct. That's exactly what I'm asking. And remember the framework <coughs> of the question. The question based upon, can we maintain an existing artificial facility previously designed <coughs> and conditioned. There's an order of conditions on the record. You can enforce an expired order of conditions. You can enforce an order of conditions for which a certificate of compliance has been issued. 
the conditions are still on the record. There's nothing unusual or unique about this. It's been designed. We're going to restore the design that was approved 14, 15 years ago and closed out 10 years ago. And shame on us, you know, the maintenance wasn't done, but we want to start doing the maintenance. The maintenance wasn't done, so shame on you, and we didn't force you to do the maintenance, so shame on us. Well, exactly. It's, it shouldn't be your fault, and it shouldn't be this hard to do routine maintenance, even if the routine maintenance has been deferred for a day. Yeah, it, well, it is this hard. It's been 11 years, and uh, let's just... Uh, I, I think... I'm... I think I'm concurring with what I'm hearing on, on this side that things are ch have changed, and I think the work is significant yeah. that it, it could uh, affect the resource area. There's no doubt we have resource area now. The one area that I don't think is in our jurisdiction is part of one, but you know you haven't put a hundred foot buffer. Because it doesn't matter. It's all yep. so, yeah. Well, actually, the four, four bay is not in resource area, is not in the buffer either, I don't think. No, I think, I think the four bay is probably out of the buffer. Yeah. So, somebody I should make a motion. I move the issue of positive determination. I'll second. Do you have any question? No, my comment was just to say that the owner definitely does care about the property in the process. Um, we came about nine months ago to start asking you your advice. We worked with you every step of the way to accommodate the board's request. I was disappointed. I was just offering, you know, we're not, it's a matter of we've got a mess, but my protection act that we've got a, this, this organization is charged with enforcing. We're making the best effort to determine what the right course of action is. So. Yeah, we, this isn't our fault, so I, I don't okay, feel better. So I'll second the motion. All those in favor of issuing a positive determination of applicability? Those abstained? Uh, tho uh, those opposed? Those abstained? I don't know. Hit down the numbers. You're voting this for the whole thing. All of the activities proposed. So essentially we can do nothing until we file a notice of intent Correct. get an order of conditions. You can work outside the buffer zone. Please. I know that. <laughs> <laughs> I'm talking about in the buffer zone. We need to do this. So I need to get this thing filed. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks. Okay, thanks, John. Because it's failing and they need to maintain it. Yeah. 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 We could issue an enforcement order, but do members want to we take didn't a go out there and supervise it, so we're kind of in the area of Well, that's okay. Do you want to take a break? Anybody? I'm trying to get educated here on this but are you going to enforce those rules? <coughs> what do you like those? Well, that, that 15 year old order doesn't have any strong language in it for us. It does have strong language. You think it does? No, it does. Fran wrote it. Yeah. You, you've seen what friends written. I have seen what friends written. So what do you think? Yeah, ma maybe. And, and one of the Because we didn't go out there and enforce it. Is it too late now to enforce it? No. No, but this volunteer to come up to No, it just seems crazy to me. They keep, you know, are you going to be here another 10 years? And then if you I won't, but some will. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Oh, no, I agree. Gonna, it's just... It's a circle. Okay, we have a continuation of the ANRAD for 270-0653, 25 Springvale Road and Randall Road. I think we have, is that this sheet or something different? I have one. I'll take those, Steve. Thank you. Liz drops this off this morning. We want a disagreement yep. with cost analysis. There is obviously an area that has some cabbage in it that could be called a wetland. If we 
strictly go by a vegetative analysis. My comment is only that there are inconsistencies in the regulations and in the bylaw. And as a result, I think it's a different interpretation. Do you want any diagrams up here? I'm sorry? Do you want any of these things up? I have uh, your plan. I have. Um, no, we can go through this pretty quickly. What, what do you see as the inconsistency? Well, the first part is from the general bylaw. Now, the bylaw is. The bylaw the or the regulation? The bylaw. That's the enabling legislation. The town votes on the bylaw. The commission can't change the bylaw. The bylaw allows the commission to write the regulations. You note the section that's yellowed out it says definitions, time, place, and procedures not inconsistent with this bylaw or regulations adopted pursuant set forth in section 40 and in the regulations promulgated by the Department of Environmental Protection as the same may be from time to time be amended I hereby made part of this bylaw. So what that says to me is that the definitions in the Wetland Protection Act are considered part of the bylaw. Well, the definitions of the Wetland Protection Act obviously allow soils. In fact, it uses a more scientific method using soils. Well, it says in this bylaw or the regulations. So we change the regulations to show a difference with the state bylaws. So it's not an inconsistency. Well, people can interpret it differently, but I interpret that as saying that they're using the Wetland Protection Act. In the next section, Section C, Jurisdiction, it notes that any freshwater wetland, including marsh, meadow, or bog that supports a preponderance of hybrid vegetation, semicolon, and the substrate in the uppermost part is predominantly undra undrained hybrid soils, and the substrate is saturated with water. I take that to mean it's got to have both of the signet, both of those items. It's got to have the vegetation as well as the uh, hybrid soils. Section C1, freshwater wetlands, also notes that it must meet all of the other criteria of 310 CMR 10.55, with the exception of connection to water bodies. So what that's saying is hybrid soils are the criteria just like in the Wetland Protection Act. The next section notes that the definition and discussion of terms in the Mass Wetland Protection Act regulations shall apply in the interpretation and inter implementation of this bylaw, with the following exceptions. That exception is where it notes that wetlands must have a preponderance of hybrid vegetation or have the following tribute. The substrate in the uppermost foot is predominantly undrained hybrid soil. That last part is what I see as the inconsistency, where it's saying that we should be using hydrophilic vegetation, where the rest of the regulation, the rest of the bylaw, seems to be telling me that you use hybrid soils. And virtually every other town uses hybrid soils, along with the vegetation. It's a much more scientific, much more accurate measure of where the wetland boundary is. And you've got members who are confident the soil. Uh, if we're going to regulate wetland areas and resource areas so strongly, the way we do, then we should also have a concise definition of a wetland that at least the professionals can go by. And you're not going to turn around and say, no, this time we want to use vegetation, this time we want to use soils. It just doesn't work that way. The regulation should be clear. And to me, my reading of it is clear. You may disagree with that. You are the approving authority. On the plan that we have, if we add so, that so you would argue area, an area that was dominated by skunk cabbage yes. was not a wetland? Yes. Remember, skunk cabbage has a 1% chance of being an upland. And Mr. Prokop agrees that it's got non-hybrid soils. Uh, the problem with vegetation is that we're going by statistics. So if you look at the facultative plants, they have a 33 to 66% chance of being in a wetland. Well, that's a 50-50 shot. Uh, Think of a red maple tree. It'll grow great in your yard, but it goes great in the wetland too. A facultative wetland plant has 66 to 99 percent chance of being in the wetland. That's like a high bush bluebird. You can grow it in the garden, but you've got to water it, but it grows well in the wetland. And an aggregate species has a 99 percent chance of going in the wetland. That means 1 percent of the time it's going to go in an upland. Now, it, it's got cabbage. Is I'll no, I'll get. I'll get. I'll get. Yes, that's fine. Now, okay. these statistics are not. Nobody, nobody had a big study and said that, oh, we found out that the red maples are in the wetland 55% of the time, or technically 33 to 66% of the time. So everybody in the business 
knows that you can go through a red maple forest, the predominant vegetation is red maple, but it's not a wetland. Uh, it's just an imprecise method of determining the wetland boundary. What you do is you look at the soils, you look at the topography, and you look at the vegetation. When the soils and the topography agree, and the vegetation agrees, then you've got a wetland boundary. I think a case could be made if we went out there in the spring or summer and it was fully vegetated and skunk cabbage was there but all the other plants in that area were upland vegetation, I think you'd have a strong case. Unfortunately, we don't have that information at hand right now. Well, we you, don't you know what other, other vegetation is in, is in there. You have some other species yes. that yes. are, you've got a blend or arrowwood, which is fact wet, so 66 to 99 percent of the time right. you might you, it's a possibility of finding that in a wetland. Yes. You've got that. You've got poison ivy. Excuse there are some maple. others that right. are, are not. Or FAC. Well, FAC up, I think. Even sugar maple is FAC up. Right. Yeah. And, and you also find it within 10 feet of, of hydric soils. So, and so then on the, this report, it's in the vicinity. first paragraph, Bob says, looking at our regulations, um, and then he backs it up on the second page. And it says, um, well, the vegetation is very sparse based on the uh, presence of these plants, which um, Becky just went over. Uh, it expands the existing wetland by 280 feet. And, so and I'm, I'm in full concurrence with that. I'm just saying that if you wanted to take issue with that, you'd have to go out there and demonstrate that it's predominantly upland vegetation and that the skunk cabbage is an anomaly. But well, we can't do it, that. We haven't done that. The way I see it is you have one section in the regulations that says you use the hydrophytic vegetation. The general bylaw and the rest of your regulations in two or three different spots specifies the use of soils. So you've got a bylaw that's inconsistent. You're the approving authority. You can run it any way you want. But I'm a soil scientist, I'm a wetland scientist, I'd rather think of it as a science. And the soils make a whole lot more scientific sense to me than just arbitrary vegetation that was never statistically determined. Nobody went out and counted where all the red maples are or where all the skunk cabbage was. It was by committee sitting down and saying, yeah, I think this one's near about 66 to 99 percent of that. It's not, it's not a legitimate science. It's intelligent guess. Can I ask you a question? Sure. What makes the soil a more accurate science? What's happening in the soil, the subsoil, normally has that brown color to it. Okay? That brown color is a result of iron in the soil. The short story is when it's under underwater, when it becomes anaerobic, the bacteria take the iron oxide, um, rust, like you have on your car. They take the oxygen from the iron oxide and use that oxygen for fuel because there's no other oxygen around. They can put the iron from the ferrous state to the ferric state. In the ferric state, the iron is mobile in the soil. So we need to get concentrations, the redox features that we see, or we get depletions, areas that are white or gray, where all of the iron has been washed out of the area. We only get that when it's under anaerobic conditions. Under the definition of a hybrid soil, all we need is water at or near the surface for a significant portion of the year. At or near the surface is 12 inches, and a significant portion of the year is only 10 days during the growing season. It's a fairly strict definition. And 10 days is not a whole lot of time. But in fact, it only takes about 10 days for that to form. And I know that because I once took a glass jar many years ago, filled it up, put a bunch of subsoil in it, and put some topsoil on the top of it, kept it full, and within two weeks I was starting to see those effects. So, so maybe a follow-up question to Michael's question would be, um, then why does Massachusetts rely on the vegetation first and then ask you to back it up with the soils if they don't feel like the soils? No. If they, the regulations specifically state that when evidence of soils is brought in, the commission must pay attention to it. It's not an option. That's right, and we certainly did. But if I could uh, comment. The reason we have Wetland Protection Act and the reason we have bylaws in this town to protect wetlands is because wetlands serve a function. And they serve primarily three functions. 
They serve a function of retention of floodwaters. They serve a function of wildlife habitat. And they serve a function of water quality enhancement and protection. The soils, whether they're stained or aerobic or anaerobic, have marginal influence on those three functions. In contrast, the vegetation contribute heavily to all those three functional values. Those wetland vegetation plants are what cause, create the wildlife habitats, not the soils. The wetland vegetation is what enhances the storage and evaporation of floodwaters, and the wetland vegetation is what has water quality enhancement, not the soils. So that is why we wrote in our regulations that if there's wetland vegetation there, it serves the function of the wetlands and their wetlands. I disagree with that because the soils are just as important because the filtration is in the soils for the protection of groundwater and surface water quality. Granted, that the plants do pay a benefit, but the soils are just as significant. And there are soils there. They don't have to be wetland soils to filter. As a matter of fact, if you think about Title V, and the on-lot treatment regulations, they rely on upland soils to filter the groundwater and improve the quality. If there are wetland soils there, Title V says you're not going to get any infiltration or improvement in groundwater quality. It's the upland soils that have the That's not saying influence. that the soils don't provide a function. They do provide a function. So I can tell you that a 500 square foot wetland has virtually no function for groundwater quality, surface water quality, flood storage protection, or wildlife habitat. Virtually none. Well, that would be true if we only had one 500 square foot puddle in Reddick. But since we've got these all over town, if we said, yeah, you're right, it's just 500 feet. It's not adding anything. If you say that to every single person that wants to disturb a wetland, then, yeah. but then, then, then you know, a 500 square foot wetland is immeasurable. If you measure, if you I, I would, I would people certainly people disagree with that. Yeah. I would mention that that's immeasurable. We, we appreciate your opinion. Our, our laws, our bylaws are written as they are. And, you I, know, I think and, and change and they're inconsistent with each other. I understand your message. But Thank you. You are the approving authority, so. Okay. Are there any other? Yeah, I, I, I wish uh, our guy Prokop was here, because I'd like to know how he changed his determination from one report to another. But, uh, for some reason, well, there's a, there's a he should, he on should be that, here right? tonight. I'm what? I like why he changed his. He didn't change his. But where, where? Should, well, this this there was another. This, this this first report says that it's in compliance and that uh, on his map right here says non-jurisdictional. Well, Al, at last at the last so meeting we asked him to go back. Did you notice yeah. the stamp? Yeah, with, three, with Mr. Three, Erickson. Uh, three times. So what about that stamp? Three that times. Draft on it. Did that on that? This doesn't say draft report. on it. Which which one's that? Uh, it's the report that he wrote on February 2nd. Should say it's a draft report. Oh. I, it doesn't say draft on mine. That's the why only I, final that's report why I read is it. The one on uh, 2000. Maybe that was the mis that well, was Look, well, maybe what Mr. Prokop is saying. Maybe it's that valid that, 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 that he changed. I'd like to know why. I'd like to have him here to ask him. So you're saying why did the wetland increase? Well, it's 168 feet that were delineated by using a different mesh method than we used to delineate all the this, other wetlands on this. the... And in Bob's defense, okay, what he said in the latest report is it's not a wetland, but essentially you can call it a wetland under your regulatory <coughs> opinion if you interpret that to mean that the vegetation... He said it's a use. jurisdictional wetland in under the Reading regulations. That's so, right. So, wait a minute. So, here's, the, here's what Bob did. He came to us and there was some discussion about this D-Series wetland. And we were, we were asked to go out there by Jamie Ma to look at the regulations and by verse by verse go through them and see if this qualifies. So what we should have done is had one continuous circle around that with flags. But what ended up happening was the two wetland scientists that were out there wanted to do soils and then vegetation. So there's a 462 foot plus or minus soils, hydric soil wetland out there. Yeah. I know. Which we call wetland here in Reading, okay? Using the soils, but it's not big enough to be jurisdictional. And then there's an additional piece that qualifies under Reading's regulations 
182 feet just using the vegetation. And we went through our regulations before, so that's also a wetland here in, Re in Reading. Combining both those, they become jurisdictional. So that's why it changed. It changed because we were asked to use the letter of the law. We probably should have done that in the first place, or they should have probably done that in the first place, but that's, that's what we got. Oh, I so it changed because the criteria changed. Well, I wish our consultant wasn't here to explain why it changed. But So that's not why it changed? You need him to say it? Yeah. I'd like him to say it. Well, well he had asked he's, a, wet, he's about, a wetland scientist. What about in the report? He says I, it. I know. In the report. Yeah, this the report? second page. Yeah, I, I read three reports. Okay. The third paragraph. I read it. Okay. You mean in the report we got yesterday or today? Right. Yeah. Dated March 7th. Second, second page, third it was paragraph. This sent out Monday. So, March 7th. I, I think I heard the applicants say they're in concurrence with that report we received on March 7th. I think everyone agrees that the wetland flags are accurate. What we don't, what they're not agreeing on is our regulations. The interpretation of the regulations and the interpretation of the wetland is, by my reading of it, the preponderance of evidence is that you use hydric sodas. And the scientific way to do it is to use hydric sodas. By your reading of it, Vegetation, dominant vegetation species are a criteria by themselves. I, that, I, I that's guess correct. That's, that's correct. That the way it's written. So I'm going to pull up on the screen what we did out there two Fridays ago, um, as soon as this thing comes on, and it'll show what we added to the original wetland. I'll confuse Al a little bit more, but let me see if we can I'm make this confused. work. Probably not necessary, Jack. Were you? Yeah, he's he's. You just said he's fine with it. He has no choice. I, I don't disagree with the report. If, if you all agree that vegetation is a valid criteria for a wetland, it's voted as a jurisdictional wetland. My, my belief is that you're reading the regulations differently than I did. I mean, I, I agree with plants being a, a valid indicator, you know, especially an obligate. Um, I don't have any additional questions about this project. Yeah. I, w I would concur with you, Nika. I uh, think in my interesting obligate and back and back plus and back plus. Uh, back I think that's enough indicator for me to yeah. say that that's not a full weapon. And, and I'm sure soils do play an important part in the state regulations, but the state regulations also say in the definition of a bordering vegetated wetland that areas containing a predominance of wetland indicator plants are presumed to indicate the presence of saturated or inundated conditions. And, and the dominant species in that area is ob obligate, facultative, what? positive, facultative wetland minus, um, and with a distinct slope. So I mean, I, I think I yeah. think we're on steady that regulatory context. reasons for defining this area as a wetland. And Jane? I don't object. I, I agree. Um, I agree with what Anika just said. I do have a question, and I should know the answer, but I don't. Um, I do know the answer. I do know that this area D is not a wetland under the state regulation but it is an isolated wetland or it is a jurisdictional wetland under the town regulations my question is under the town regulations does that wetland d have the 25 and 35 foot setbacks and the 100 foot buffer zone it would my it doesn't is yes I can't remember if we made a distinction for isolated wetlands with respect to buffer zone. <coughs> I just don't remember. I don't think we did. I can take a peek at the 35-foot area. Just to make sure. Bordering any wetland. So 
this isolated wetland definitely applies. With that, that so do we have a concurrence among the members of the commission as to is this jurisdictional under our bylaw? Yes. Yeah. I, I, I believe it does. So you, you, just to be absolutely prepared for the future, um, the issuing authority has to determine that sole reliance on wetland indicator plants will yield an accurate delineation. So I'd like you to agree maybe even make a vote on that um, a vote because on that's what? right out of the regulations a vote on what that you believe that a sole reliance on vegetation um, yields an accurate vegetate uh, an accurate delineation um, does anybody have a copy of that March 7th uh, yeah, I report do. I think he reiterates our regulations in there, if I remember correctly from reading it. The definition of a wetland? The definition of yeah. the wetland out of my paper yeah. I read it. Right. Um, the wetlands must have a preponderance of hydrophytic vegetation. And what we're saying is that additional 188, 182 feet, square feet, has a preponderance of hydrophytic vegetation. Mm -hmm. And that's what Chuck, I think, is asking us to concur with. Mm -hmm. And I think, I think my, I, I for, unfortunately, the site visits, there have been at times where I was working and couldn't attend. So I haven't seen it, but from reading the report and listening to the other commissioners, the only vegetation we can see out there is the skunk cabbage and some poison ivy and what was the third one? Arrowwood. 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 The poison ivy and the arrowwood are facultative and uh, the skunk cabbage the is arrowwood obligate. Arrowwood is facultative what? Yeah. So them, them from them what we see out there, there isn't much vegetation this time of year, but the preponderance of what's out there is hydrophytic wetland vegetation. So Again, my, my only concern, not concern, but somebody wanted to make a case they could go out there when it's fully vegetated and if everything else was um, obligate upland then that, that could change but I don't think that would be the case so do we have a motion to Can I just ask one clarifying question sure there? so the orange section on here <coughs> the, the wetland that is upland soil which we agree everything else is hydrated soil right is there any debate on that the green Green and the blue. Oh, why are they different? They were just done at different times? I think they were expanded, I think. So green was the original delimitation. Right. So we're saying that 336 plus 160 square feet are hydro soil. Right? So 460 out of 628 of this, parse, this, this segment of soil is, in fact, hydro soil. Plus, the whole thing is covered with. It is are the green and blue area supportive of obligate wetland species? Now, if not, I wonder why not. There was grape in there, um, and there was skunk cabbage in there. Oh, there was skunk cabbage. Not in the green and blue area. Not in the green and blue. Well, why do you think they were not, the if they're hydric soils? I, I, I only saw them in the 168 the other day. Wait a minute. The, there was skunk cabbage. Was there skunk cabbage? Chuck fell basically on skunk cabbage. Did you see me? <laughs> well, wasn't that in the 168 thing? I saw it up close. <laughs> so there's no longer skunk cabbage there because Chuck <laughs> took it out. I know. Very resilient. Right in the, that down lowered corner of the green. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. okay. No, so it, there is skunk I mean, cabbage in the green blue so area. I said that I that's the hydric soil portion. I mean, again, because it qualified for that. That doesn't mean there wasn't vegetation there. Yeah. So, so the majority of this parcel, this, this delineated area, has hydric soil. Right. All of it has wetland plants. Except for that that aren't. Except for the orange piece. But orange the majority, piece, yeah. right, the green and the blue, we all agree are hydric soil. I, I would just like to point out, or not point out, but ask if there's 
agreement with this statement that if we have a 35 foot no bill zone around area D, that would eliminate a significant portion of this parcel from development. Am I misreading that? I'm not going to make that judgment right now. This is only an AMRAP. Oh, I know. So, but so I, I'm not going to speculate. I'm just going to say. But I'm we do, we do concur that there's a 35 foot no build zone around that area D. No, no, we no, we're we're only. No, no, I'm identifying yeah, the reason. I'm saying it, it, by it calling that a wetland, even though well, it's I an think isolated you wetland. Look into that. I mean, you weren't sure, I, and I just don't you remember were saying. I mean, let's look into the regulations. It might. I, I think it might have that setback. But the only thing I can compare it to is I'm just thinking of the habitat area of a vernal pool, and that's kind of why it was written. So maybe it doesn't, and maybe it's just 100 feet of habitat, and you need to protect that. So there is a little bit to look into. Not clear. But there is no proposal on the table at this point. This is just, just, just um, right. So do I hear a motion to concur that this is a wetland? So well, the, I, I move that this drawing dated, well, to, dated November 6, 2015, I don't see a revision on it. Oh, it's received by the Tan of Reading March 9. Yeah. Does that have... <clears throat> Oh, so, yeah. Okay, all right. Yeah, three, right. Yeah. Three. Three, four, six, okay, three. then I move that this drawing that has the latest revision is 3416 accurately depicts. Uh, wait, wait, wait. You know what, Jamie? I need to ask that if there are any comments from the public. Oh. Sorry. Again, Melody Fox, Melody Fox, Melody Fox, I know we've been focusing on five, six, and seven, lots five, six, and seven. Um, there's been no real talk about lots eight, lots nine, which is would be in question if there was going to be some sort of development um, due to the emergency and whatnot. Um, so again, bring up the question of vegetation, waiting for the right times. Um, Lot eight, between lot eight and nine, again. Um, Is that the that, same thing as parcel eight? Uh, yeah, parcel eight, parcel nine, you know, where that, the new line starts to come down and whatnot. Um, again, with the, yes, but then the. What line flags, one, two, three, four, So five, five six, seven, mm -hmm. eight, lot eight and nine in that area. Mm -hmm. Actually, sorry. closer towards um, 23 Springville on that paper lot um, where the flags are due to the warm weather. Um, again, it's a lot more skunk having popping up. Probably it. Let's face it. Um, you know, it's, it's, a, it's a lot more wet than in lot, in lot six where, you know, uh, Mr. Perkoff brought up you know, that in the applicant's defense that it is dry there. I wish he was here so I can actually talk to him about that. I don't know how much in depth that um, this this third party has gone into the other lots. Um, he looked at all of this um, okay. and concurred with um, uh, Norse Environmental with the line. Uh, I think his first report said um, a lot of this area, and we did look at this area in depth when we, when the, yeah. And he, present, he presented that. Right. Uh, yes, he did, did talk about that. Mm -hmm. um, and there is skunk cabbage. Yeah, I, I agree. It's quite wet back in here. Right. Yeah, very. Well, it, I mean, it's closer towards the, um, behind 23 Springvale Road, um, where it seems. But, you know, again, um, I'm not trying to 
beat a dead horse, but you know, there is about, what is it, 517 square feet that will be saying from Moses first um, delineation. And I know you guys have done all that you can or whatnot, and again, I'm, it's, it's, the, it's, the, it's the weather. I, I just still think that there's a lot out there that should be left to the spring and to be looked at, you know, to, to I don't know. I, I, it's just, it's very frustrating because, of, like, we keep going back and forth about this and this is getting moved out and whatnot because of what uh, the findings are. And I, I still feel that it, because of the season that there's a lot out there that I think is left to be discovered and that should be looked at um, before everything's finalized because this is finalized for, what, three years at least? That's correct. And it's in good that three time, years. There could be variances or granted and, and income by houses and you can't you can't really question that anymore. So um, again, you know, there's a gully that goes along six, seven, and eight as well. Um, there's the flags right on the the streamline, but again there's more stuff cabbage popping up ten feet down that way, ten feet from that line. I mean it's just what, where could would you mind going to the board and pointing to where you're talking about the more additional scum cabbage? So, and there's a like a gully area that you know it's very, you know, again that kind of comes down this way, right along just the the bank mm -hmm. area. Um, the and I know there's a small depression. wetlands area that they made a I think they flagged it here. That's it. That's correct. And somewhere in this area now, scum cabbage it's starting to pop up from the flags, a good ten feet. And then, you know, again, give or take, I'm not an expert on measurements, but, you know, in this er particular area, there's more skunk cabbage. Um, and I took pictures, but I, I didn't have time to send it um, with, with the, the pink flags um, in the picture where it's, you know, the skunk cabbage. And they're good, really, they're not that, like, sort of flimsy, questionable. It's wet, and they're bigger, and it's, it's a good 10 feet from flat, the original flags. So I just want to, you know, make sure that we get everything right. That's all. You know, again, we have a lot of people that are not loving what's going on here and want to preserve what we have. And so, you know, I wish m Mr. Prograf, you know, was here that we could pick his brain as well. Um, so, thank so. You. what I, I would just like to admit, Bob did mention last week that there were you know, besides this, this C and D area, that there were other areas that he thought were eight by five. Eight we by had five. done right. quite a few. In, in yeah. fact, Anika and I, when we first got out there, we did, and you helped us with some soil probes. We saw some other areas, but but Mr. Erickson and Mr. Prokop did a pretty extensive um, hydric soil borings. And those areas did not meet the criteria of our, either our wetlands protection or Redding's wetland bylaw. I would also just like to, you know, I, I know, you know, that the, the, I know there's a, there was an area added here that was jurisdictional. I, I think in, in uh, Norse's defense, I, I think everybody went to this site and said it, this is confusing because of the disturbed condition. I think. It, even this area took a second look from the last meeting. I, but I think besides this area, it, it seemed to me that North and uh, our, you know, our third party were in complete concurrence with where these lines were. So at this point, I don't know that it's, you know, I'm of the opinion that I, you know, if those two, if our, the two professionals agree with it, then I'm, I'm in concurrence with where they've got it coordinated. I mean, that's fine. I'm just, like I said, putting in what I thought and what I've been saying about <coughs> season and whatnot. I just don't want to miss anything because once it's gone, it's gone. We can't, we can't get it back. So, right. thank you. Okay. Your um, name, please. Karen McCadden, 64 Glenmere Circle. I'll find out the corner over there. Um, 
I don't know if this is kind of a silly question, but you said you would go down 12 inches to check the soil samples. Is that right? No, we actually checked down to 18 inches. 18, okay. We're looking for indications of water within 12 inches. Okay. So if we see it within 18, we're assuming that it's within 12. Okay. Because um, I was just um, a couple meetings ago brought up how the ditch was man dug 50 years ago, and when Randall Road was made, it was indicated, my impression was that all that soil was tossed moved. and moved mm -hmm. into some of this area. Mm -hmm. So I'm wondering, is that soil being taken into consideration when you're going down, you know, with wetland soil, could it be beneath farther down? Because, you know, that ditch is very deep. And where is all that soil? Is that in this area on top of what had been there? I don't know if that makes a difference, but... Can I answer that? Uh, first off, not most of the soil was disturbed. Anywhere we get a topsoil or subsoil was not disturbed. Uh, and we saw the subsoil in quite a number of places out there. The reason is because subsoil is aeolian deposition. It's windmill. When the glaciers receded, this was like a big gravel pit. For several thousand years, just windblown dust and sand collected. As a result, we have the subsoil, and it's virtually all the same particle size. So the presence of subsoil tells you that this soil was not disturbed. The only effect that that ditch could have is it could drain the soil out in the immediate vicinity, uh, in which case you would still have the relic modeling, but you wouldn't necessarily have a hybrid soil. It would be a drained hybrid soil. In this case, we didn't see the relic modeling over there either. And the modeling, once it forms, does not go away. So if I get a hybrid soil and I drain it out, it's still going to have the features of a hybrid soil 100 years later. It may not be a hybrid soil, but it'll have the features of a hybrid soil. So if, if something like that had happened, if we had drained it out, it would have showed up for it, to us. But were you talking about draining or filling? I, I'm, um, I'm not sure if you answered. I understand what you just said. But um, I, I think I did. Um, I'm trying. Do you want to restate it? What, you know, what I'm saying is when they dug the ditch and the dirt from right. that 10 feet down, did they put that dirt where those four, in that this land area, like you indicated when they finished Randall Road, it said, my impression is you said they took some of the soil and kind of just put it in that area pushed it down in there, I'm sorry. So when they dug that ditch, whatever, 10 feet down through all our backyards, where is that soil? Is some of that soil sitting on top of this it, land? It, it so could be, it could be. And so I'm just wondering, does it, that interfere with digging down the 18 inches? Or right, that's, it, that's it does, that 12 down. inches is from where the ground is when the Wetlands Protection Act was passed. So if somebody put in four feet of fill over a wetland in 1971, um, then it's no longer wetland. Okay. If they put the fill over top of wetland soil in 1999, then yes, okay. you, you would be correct. Okay. Okay. So, yes, there could be wetland soil. There but could. It's there too, probably it's too late is. Because too late. it's been it, yeah. 50 plus years that they right. did that. Okay. Exactly. Thank you. Uh, Frank Coleman, 26 Randall Road. I'd like to build on that a little. In addition to the soil from the ditch, the contractor who built our houses dumped rocks, concrete, lumber, and anything else he wanted to get rid of without paying to dispose of legally down there. And I think you folks saw that. And I think some people said that it's pretty likely this would be one big wetland area. The questionable vernal pool and the area we're talking about tonight would be one big wetland if that hadn't been dumped there. That was dumped after 1971. The last home was built in 1976. So clearly that, and when he built the turnaround circle, you can see where he dumped his asphalt in there too. It's clearly visible. I guess my thinking is if that were cleaned out, and I don't know who's going to pay for that, that would Chances are that would be one big wetland. That would be a big area. So that clearly was after 1971. I, I said 71. That isn't when the Wetlands Protection Act was passed. It was passed in 
72. Mm -hmm. Okay, and the last house was built in 76 and 77, which was the same house. Uh, so, basically, I think, Jamie, what you said still stands. Yeah, you know, that's I, I mean, I think this was so long. Right. This was built so long ago that yeah, it was passed. We saw no evidence of the wetland out there. Yeah. And we would have seen it. Yeah, I, I mean, I, I think that's. There are piles of debris out there, no question about it, but we saw no evidence of filled area. But you, you didn't remove the piles of debris, so how do you know it's under the... Come out to the I'm sorry? You, you didn't remove the piles of construction materials, how do you know it's under them? They look like they're still there to me. We tested beside those soils, and we have a subsoil. So um, I think we, we need to, um, to the move chair. on to the with chair. us, please. We've uh, had a lot of meetings, and I think that the commission has listened to everyone and you know we hired a third party and, and I think at this time I would like to hear us to move on with this. I, I'd make a motion to remove the delineation as shown as on map dated March 4th, 2015. Do I hear a second? A second. All those in favor? All those opposed? All those abstained? Thank you. And thank you, everyone, for being here. Thank, thank you. So that this needs to be accepted. That, that, <coughs> that is correct. The line. That is the line. I just want to make sure I know what I'm doing. Well, they aren't proposing. Yeah. What they're doing is trying to get concurrence and confirmation where the weapons are. So they can lay out and avoid sweat, but they have to know where they are. This is over. Um, we'll sign the conditions, the order at the next meeting. And I uh, just say that it'll identify all the wetland flags. There's, there's only two. Wetland flags, and that'll be it. And it'll also say that there are no well, other uh, resource areas found. Designating that as a wetland. Uh, that takes out a good piece of this to fill the land. Because there might not be enough of the land there for it to be economically okay, viable. Folks. So folks, we have other things on the agenda, please. Yeah. Yeah. You can uh, come in. Can you not build 35. From a wetland. You can get a variance, but in general, you can do it. Yeah. 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 <laughs> I'm not going to make it for him. No, I know. Which one's this? Yes. Let's try. Yeah. Kids love them. Yeah, that sign. Why is he here in the stores? Just this to review is, it? Yes, to review, make sure it's got everything that we talked about. Yeah. Yeah. 73 yeah. Yeah. Oh, uh, I saw him, I saw him too. And it, it this is the wall on the deck. I did the <laughs> Stairs going down the opposite side. We already voted on this, right? Yeah. Yep. So you write these, right? Yeah. <coughs> wow, 
Oh, we can't have that door closed. Chuck, would you mind? I have a sign out there that doesn't Oh, okay, work. thank you. Okay. <laughs> it's getting testy. Who, me? No, I didn't mean to be. <laughs> it did so. Like, right. so. What? <laughs> it sounded like I am. <laughs> sorry. <laughs> to Jamie. I'm sorry, Jamie. Jamie, <laughs> I didn't hear it, though. <laughs> <laughs> I was just saying the signs out there. Um, what do you got to have a sign uh, public meeting? Yeah. yeah. No, you either have to have the door open or a sign that's saying this is an open meeting. Open meeting. Yeah, and there has to be one. They don't have to be multiple. <laughs> well, I guess it could. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> we're, we're open, but we don't really want you to find the door. <laughs> oh my God. Don't walk on the grass. Were they going to just use a weed wrench, or were they going to also? Apply glucosate. They're gonna. Um, she was pretty. I just I read it and it didn't adamant. say she's glyphosate. Committee but he, I think he did say it at the meeting. I thought he said he's gonna try to do everything with the weed branch. We're gonna try and do as much as we can with the weed branch. Okay, and you're borrowing that from us, right? Yes. It's in my office. Okay. So, it's okay if we don't have anything about glucosate in there. I could add that if if because then it'll give them the option. I right, think. and we uh, voted should. to approve that. Yeah, I mean, that was described to us at the meeting. I think it's in the minutes as well. You need a, a licensed applicant. The mm -hmm. Danish so I'd, I'd add that part too. Are a okay. lot more contentious okay. than okay to do? almost all. I think it's fine. Yeah. Oh, really? Uh, yeah, yeah most of them are much more, no, much more straightforward. Much oh, less really? It's not, it's not in there, right? Oh, no, really? I don't see it. No, I'm adding it. I'm going to add it. Okay. So we're going to add we would just um, approve as amended at this point. So, I guess let us know when you're done. Um. So um, while you're reading this, I, I got um, a little bit of pushback from the applicant on uh, Grove Street about the granite bounds, and we're just kind of rethinking about the application. We didn't mention that to him at all, and maybe we should mention that to every applicant that we're requiring on a notice of intent granite bounds. He 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 was okay with it after I explained. Um, why we do it and that everyone does it, um, but it just didn't come up at the meeting at all. Where did his granite bounds go? Way down. Way down, right? Yeah, they'd be way down. Way down. When you say granite, but in my time here, we have, it has been granite or it has been concrete form. <coughs> Very true. I was just being a little bit lazy. I'm just saying, I only, yeah, doesn't. I was just. Because there's a big cost we've difference. Had, we've, had, we've had people put them on fences before, haven't we? Yeah. yeah. What's that? Yeah. We've had people and, put them on uh, fences. Dennis' properties, they're on the light poles. Mm. Mm. I think as long as the signs go up mm. about the 25 foot line, it's. it's but mention that a sign will, will be required. Madam Chair, I have no, no issues. Pe people, I think, freak out about that because those granite pounds are expensive. I told him you'd get them there. Where, how much are they? I, I don't even know. You get them at Swanson. They're like 60 bucks a piece. <coughs> some of my, you know. It's three. Well, some, you get, I, I put like 20 of them in on some of my Well, he only, needs, he only needs three. And I'll give him a call tomorrow and, and explain that if there's um, uh, an available tree, it'll work if everyone agrees. A what? Tree? No, you can't put them on a tree. Then we'll get back to Granite Bounce. Or concrete. Okay. There you go. Can't put them on a tree. No, we will allow a Why do we even talk about this? Why don't we get to this? Let's go you know what, so um, do have you have reviewed this to. What does it say? No comment on it. So, someone make a motion to accept uh, the order of conditions as for 73 Fairchild Drive as amended. I'll second. All those in favor? Great. Opposed? Abstain. So we have one more. We have an item. It would be a great spot to put it in right Thank here you. if you wanted to. Excuse me. One. 
Um, is she going to be have it sent to her within ten days? How is she? Uh, that yeah. Day? Sorry. Do, you wanna, do we? Show, so shall we? Do we have track. I have. I have a one to sign, and we will send that out tomorrow, or you can pick it up at the office. Okay. It's up to you. You can't, but you have to tell me now if you can pick it up because it goes out in the mail pretty quickly. I, I can pick it up tomorrow. Okay, I'll have it ready for you tomorrow. Okay. And um, and uh, then there's a 10-day appeal period, mm -hmm. and your work can start after that. But there's some conditions, uh, and we have a pre-activity. Uh, Creativity list of things to do, put up a sign, erosion control, all that kind of stuff, okay. and that's I'll add that to the packet too. Okay. And we'll we'll talk tomorrow. Okay. I will pick it up tomorrow. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you very Thank much. You. Good, night. Good luck with the new addition. Thank you. Thank you. If you don't mind opening the door on the way out. No problem. Looks like the give us my disperse. The Randall Road <laughs> rebels have <laughs> vacated. I mean, who knew you were throwing a lot of them with such a prickly bunch, huh? <laughs>find the flags it was grass the tree between the houses no no it's kind of moving around the sidewalk yeah, i don't think i was here this is an rda okay. that we gave for this it was delineated by um, Libby at hayes engineering <coughs> yeah because it was becky truck and i walked from randall road over, over to, to this to right this. yeah to the back of this yeah so here's here's the addition that we approved right in this area here and this stuff. And this is an existing garden, existing shed. And when they laid out the corners of this thing here, this 30 inch pine tree right here um, dropped some limbs. And they came down pretty close to this area here. And it bothered her a lot. And you could see the lean that I was uh, that I showed you in those pictures. So the distance between the tree and the house, or the proposed house, is 40 feet. The distance between the tree and wetland flag number three, which is the closest flag, mm -hmm. is 56 feet. So it does qualify because it's outside the 25 foot, it's outside the 35 foot, and it's beyond the 50 foot. So what do you mean it qualifies? It, 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 we ask the trees aren't taken down within the 25 foot zone of natural vegetation. And then there's something in the order of conditions that asks them not to take them down uh, within 50 feet. I thought you said it was an RDA. Yeah, <laughs> but, but still. RDA with but conditions. But still it qualifies for both. Well, did you put that condition when you issued no, the not. RDA? No, I did not. 
Yeah, I, and then if so you if, didn't, then um, I, I think I so probably great. shouldn't have mentioned it. I'm just sorry for confusing you. I just mentioned it because no matter what we did, it would qualify. So we only have to look at this as a tree that's 80 feet to 100 feet tall that's dropping limbs and has a split trunk that's within striking distance of a proposed addition that was forgotten about during an application. She's requesting, and did you all get the letter? She's put something really nice together. She's proposing to plant a tree anywhere on that property, um, including this area where it's coming out if it's a pine, and to provide an as-built plan showing this commission that she's done that. Um, so she, so what's the? She, I, 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 I think that's, I'm in favor of that. It sounds like. I just understand what she is. It seems like it's spelling that way anyway. She doesn't actually get a certificate of compliance. I, no, I, I she know. doesn't. Okay. But we do, we do a sign off for them. Okay. And to have her put the expense into a uh, as built plan for RDA might not be needed. Yeah. But I could, I could change that up and say that I would go out and verify yeah, that well, the yeah. plan. That's fine. Yeah, that's, okay. that's fine. Yeah. I would like to just comment. I, I agree with everything that's been said. I think it's fine. I would like to comment, though, if this had been an NOI and an order of conditions, and we had our standard clause in there that you couldn't cut any tree between the proposed structure and the wetlands, any healthy tree, if that's a healthy tree, that w we couldn't allow that. That would be in violation of the order of conditions. Well, it, but it gives that caveat where they can prove that if it's like health or safety, we will consider it. I don't remember that in the clause. I just remember no healthy trees can be cut between the That's it. No uh, healthy permitted trees. structure and the wetlands. Is, is this healthy? That's the clause. Well, That's uh, since this is an RDA, this, but if, if it was an NOI and if that was healthy, it would be in violation of that order of conditions. The reason we did that was if that, uh, let's say that tree was 60 feet high, it, if it fell, it wouldn't have hit the original structure, it would only hit what we permitted. So what we're telling people, you can build that there, but there are trees that we're not going to allow you to cut that might fall on it, and you're going to have to live with that. This is kind of in line with the discussion we had a little while ago about not it, coming back with stuff in the in the twenty five foot feet. Right. Even though you're building you know, you're building something new outside the thirty five. Right. I, I do have to say that, you know, this this was only two or three meetings ago. And there's always that oh yeah factor in um, any building project. And this one happened to be when they actually staked it out and there was the storm. Some of the other ones that have come to us have been many years later. They promised us they wouldn't take the trees down. The trees grew too high, too close, filled out, and, and five or 10 years later, they're saying, oh, now I want to take down this tree, or it's a new owner. Yeah. I, but this, this is more or less really is just Is the addition actually it. constructed? No, it's no. just staked out on the ground. Then I, I would, I would um, submit that if this had been an NOI, that we're talking hypothetically, NOI with that order condition, that phrase, and the thing wasn't built, they could come back with a minor modification to take that tree out, yeah. and we could consider that. But if it was like you said, it's five years later and the thing was built, can't do it. I think she wants to take it out before she starts construction. Yeah. It yeah. just makes sense. Okay. I have no objection. Yeah. I don't know. That was it. I will uh, send her a letter tomorrow. And then, yeah, no good to clarify, you know, they don't do that, so, you know, one of my things is that they don't do that. Okay. I will. Do we need to vote on this, or just? No. Oh, good. I don't think so. Good. Awesome. Great. It's, it's going to happen, yeah. Um, okay. What about uh, 30 Whittier Road? We took a site visit on Monday. This is order of compliance. This certificate, is a certificate of, certificate of compliance. compliance. Certificate of compliance. <laughs> and we saw three pounds. We saw all these shrubs that they had planted. There was extensive planting plant. It's pretty amazing. But there was um, some some trash uh, in 
that planted area, there's remnants of a concrete fountain in two places. There was a metal pail. There were some other things. Like small debris. Small yeah. debris, and we wanted that taken out. I think Chuck could talk to the owner. Yeah, so it's Dave Johnson. And um, and I did talk to him. And I had been out there prior to this because he really you know, had his ducks in a row. He wanted me to view the place and then and then do this. And I reminded him the other day that our meetings tonight stop passing. So he said that he would put someone on it today. And I've been down to the property, and um, it's for the most part cleaned up. I mean, it's. There's, I mean, I don't have an issue. Uh, what was out, what's left in there is one or two pieces. Uh, no. And they can just grab that tomorrow. It's and all the stress of this business. I think maybe I was really searching when I looked at that, but I wanted to tell the commission what I saw. Uh, so, in my opinion, he's, he's, he's met, 60. he's beyond met what he, what he needs to do to get a certificate of compliance because of the mitigation, because of the clean out of all the debris that was there with the leaves, the uh, infiltration at the end of the driveway. And I checked on the retaining wall for you, Al. And that was I'm just curious. I see it on this January. Part of the original yeah. plans, it was right there. Oh, good. So, again, this was I don't think uh, it was outside the 35. It didn't matter to me. I was just curious. But it, I wanted, you asked, and I wanted to check. So that was, uh, again. So yeah, I make a motion we. Approve. It is? What? Inside the third side. Well, make a motion we approve the uh, certificate of compliance for uh, Whittier Road as is. is. Yeah. Sorry. All those in favor? Opposed? Abstained. It's you know, house. you get paid. Nice you get paid by how many votes you make. <laughs> your <laughs> check's gonna be <laughs> short this week. Yeah. Sort of looks like Clint Eastwood, sort of. Dave, Dave, Dave Johnson. Yeah, kind of. Yeah, Maybe. You can't ask a guy that question. <laughs> <laughs> but but uh, am I thinking of you know the? I know them very well. Yeah. Am, am I thinking of the right guy? He's a great guy. He lives in that. He lives in that pink house next to Wood End School. Yes. Yeah, yeah. I can figure yeah. out a system for this. Yeah. That's too bad. Yeah. <laughs> it, it just sort of. So his wife made paint. Paint. He's obviously okay. Oh, that was like the Bobby. Right. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um, he's he's, he's trying to remove some stress yeah. from his okay. life, though. I think the order went in. Okay. He's in That's the wrong terrible. business. That's fine. I just no, want to make sure I wasn't on the wrong business. I don't think the order went. I know the order went in, but I think it went in on Monday. So we're not going to talk about Mariona no, Drive. Continue, please. Um, how are we doing with our um, committee on um, tree replacement policy? Anika won't talk to me. <laughs> That's a lie, a damn lie. You uh, should have gotten the car with us going to MCC. You would have had two yeah, hours. Yeah, we, we have not met. Did we decide <laughs> that, that the committee? Meet. It, had to, be it had to be a posted meeting, and we had okay. to we had to make you have minutes. to you have to take minutes. And after that, <coughs> I don't know, scared us off. I don't know. We just haven't had a chance to meet. Oh, is the storm and, and the weather? We even play phone tag about it. No. We Would it help it. if you guys added some another person to your committee, or it doesn't have to be anyone on the commission. It could be a non-commission member on your committee. If that would help. I don't know. We could, but then there would be three schedules to coordinate. <laughs> I'm not trying to be. Well, uh, what, I'm, what I think is great about having three people, if one person can't make it, make it you can still, still get involved. together with the other two. Yeah. So. Ooh. What about what about inviting the tree warden? <laughs> Be on. He does. No, he, he, would, he, would, he, he, he would. He would. He would. He probably would, but you'd have to come here to do it. I mean, maybe that's fine. During work hours. Yeah. What about any, any thoughts or feedback about that idea? Well, what? Why, why, why don't we try and get together a couple more times and make some sort of outline, and okay. then we'll see if we need a third person. Can I ask a okay. question? Do you guys start with um, some other town have something done that we steal? Yeah. Uh, yeah. Something? Chuck yeah, gave us something from Lexington. I'm still reading it. It was about oh, 87 that, pages. Is that? 
But that was not for the for what that was for We the destroyed two hundred trees in order to write the regulations. Yeah. <laughs> what were you saying? Was that the one that is very involved? Yes. Yep. Yeah, I thought that was involved. You know, I thought that was really easy. It was like a flow chart. Two trees, here we go, bushes. So it's the it was person in your, a flow chart. in your commission that put something together that was pretty... No, no, no. I sent them something that had, that you would just count down how many, with one tree or one bush, yeah. this is a replacement. It was something like that, and they needed to come up with some language. I gave them some sample language. Really, I mean, they could really... What I don't know how long it'll take, <laughs> but, what, but what it shouldn't take that, that long. We just need to meet. You just need so. to meet, yeah. You live right near me, don't you? <laughs> I don't know. Yeah. You drive by my house on Hopkins. Yeah, you, uh, you live about 1.2 miles apart. <laughs> you could, yeah, you could have, have, it's time, too. You could have Jamie <laughs> on the committee, and then you could... No, I live way house. too far away. I'm on the other side of Woodward Street. That's pretty far. Well, I'm okay. I'm pretty much available in the in the any so time let's, of the day. So let's let's can we so okay. just to move this along, I'm going to put it on the agenda for the next meeting, and Fine. you guys will have something to talk about. Well, okay. we'll we'll um, get some dates before we leave tonight. And and you're not you don't want to have the option of adding somebody else. Not yet. You're good. You're still good with each other. Not yet. Not yet. <laughs> <laughs> they don't know. Well, you know, it's it's an open yes. open. It, 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 it's, an, it's an open it's an open meeting. Anybody can come. Yeah. So if there's right. some people you think you might want, you could invite them to come, and you wouldn't have to schedule around them and invite them to come, and then they might decide to Actually, join. I might like to come. So if so, when you schedule something. Let me know. Okay. So it can be at your house, but you I have to advertise it. Yeah. And you have to take minutes. So you can have yeah, it here. You can be having it at a public <laughs> library. You can have it in places like that. You can have it at Matera Cabin. You can have it at Matera That's Cabin. Right, All those things are available. But I need to know, and I need to know three days. I've never been to that Matera Cabin. Plus or minus. Nice. Actually, okay. it can three, be in three days before you do it. Okay. It, it can be in someone's house. It, you have to just let other people in. Yeah, I would advise against that because you'd have to open your house to anybody that wanted to come yeah. in. I would advise I mean, it's against an that. Open that's meeting at your house. Bad idea. You're right. Yeah. yeah well, so Matera Cabin is a great idea. That. Good. Matera Cabin is a great idea, but it's not open every day. It's it's used a lot. It's no I, I think to to just house. house. I wouldn't open house thing. do it in a place where there are other people around. I don't give a shit who comes. Do it here or do it at the library. Or Right. Yeah. Why well, the library doesn't have meeting rooms anymore? Oh, that's right. but I just, I just. Al, that's gonna. Don't put yourself. In a, I mean, there's so much scary stuff in the news. I wouldn't put yourself in it. No, I, I, I never do that. Don't worry about it. I'll protect. I I'll protect. Like, like I'll, I'll repeat this again. Once he and I get the, on the same calendar date, at the same up. time of day, then we'll go that next step. Okay. Okay. That's okay. That. So, can you folks that went to the MACC? Um, conference, give us a little brief. brief it was it? excellent. Yeah, it usually is. Um, were you there? I was in the wings. You were in the I decided to stay down and talk to everybody in there. I didn't see you. Yeah. I was going to go I used to, I, I used to I work with the MCC. I know all those yeah. guys very well. Yeah. They did? I actually never got out of the oh, entrance. Oh. So I went to two classes. I went to values and Function. functions of wetlands, and then I went to how to get home before the night. Um, how we doing? Uh, indeed, which I thought was good. And I stuck, snuck in for part of uh, Conservation Commission's Behaving Badly, where they had an attorney who you recognize the name, McGregor. 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 Yeah. Uh, and he, he, he talked about... Yeah. They helped write the regulations. Yeah, I mean, he was very good. But I only stayed for about half days because I had to get to my other class. Um, one of those um, it, uh, moderators, uh, no, one of those guys, uh, Nathaniel Stevens, in one of your classes? Mm, but I know of. Okay, he was doing one of the classes, I couldn't remember. I thought it was uh, Get Home Before Midnight. Um, is he in? Colin Thin. Yeah, like Topsfield or? No, he's in Arlington. No, but I, yes. Well, I met somebody there from Arlington who talked about you. He said you were a nice guy. A lousy memory for people. But so it was, you know, it was really helpful for me because 
so much of this is technical. I mean, just you know, you guys have been doing this for a long time, and there's still debates about well, is it one plant or you know, soil and water? If, um, you know, you have to. It's really interesting. Just you know, I, like as I was thinking about the conversation tonight about the road or, or um, um, David's Mr. Project. Dick, the the. You know, we're talking about cutting trees down. We still haven't agreed on whether it's an RDA or not. That's a catch-22. I mean, I, I, that I, I, place I, should be cleaned up. Thinking. but Yeah. So I, so I learned, you know, I learned a lot of good stuff just from that. I think we did a role play. You know, how do you help me for a So we had three commission members, four commission members, four members of the public. I was a builder, and I had my cousin as the, the um, consultant. Oh. And then uh, the chair of the commission was also my cousin, which we sort of disclosed, but no one quite overheard me. We always had these cards saying that. Okay. <laughs> I, I got up there and I got belligerent. I said, I got, you know, I got people ready to work. We need jobs in this town. And <coughs> you're a stone wall. <laughs> and, uh, and then this woman. No one's I, ever heard that before. I forget where she was from. She she should have been on Saturday. Uh, she, she, uh, she was one of the uh, members of the public. Talked about the birds, the birds, and she was literally almost in tears. She was just a brilliant actress. <laughs> so it was, it was engaging. Mm -hmm. um, and we tried to ride there and back, and I got a one of the tour. So I learned all kinds of good stuff. Right. Um, did you, I was able to attend, I, I attended in the morning the, the functions and values yeah. course, which yeah, I thought was good. I thought the, the dealing with solar arrays uh, and uh, a personal interest. Oh, come um, on. I, I actually commented, did the wetlands for a solar installation. Yeah. It, it, was, it was pretty interesting because a lot of it was about, it, their, the regulations are, um, aren't very clear, um, particularly in, in of what's required both, you know, for cutting because there's limb requirements, there's clearance requirements. Right. Uh, uh, and then also from a, a runoff perspective, because arrays aren't aren't it's it's not impermeable, but it's concentrating flow to drip lines. It, they end up with with a lot of erosion issues, um, and the regulations are pretty unclear of what's required. And, and the rate the well, sorry regulation sorry standard practices are, are pretty of, of what they can get credit for credits for when they're actually designing it, and so the, you see a lot of variations between sites and the uh, state. So I thought it was pretty interesting. And then uh, I also attended. Who was the presenter on that? It was um, it, the uh, Mass DEP. I don't know how very unique. So I don't know about it. But he was actually, he did the, my second one as well. And then it was uh, someone from. Because that is Mass DEP and yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um, Michael Howard. Michael Howard. Matt Schweitzberg is EPA. That's right. Matt Director. That's right. Michael Howard, the administrator of North Andover, a long time ago. I don't know. Matt Spicebrush. Yes. Spice yes. really yeah. So yeah. Pain. <laughs> yeah. Am I thinking of the right one? Wh who is he yeah. with? Yeah. Michael Howard yeah. with Epsilon. Epsilon? Yeah. So I thought that was interesting. The second one I attended in the afternoon was gas pipelines and hmm. uh, both uh, maintenance and uh, new, new construction. Uh, that one was good. It, you know, I, I unfortunately there were not a lot of time for questions. I had some questions for them, but there was uh, they ended up getting flooded with uh, 
to the people sitting in the front row and stop the pipe pipeline shirts and asking questions about it. It, it, oh, it, it kind of got disorganized at the end because yeah. of uh, attendance. Yeah, yep. some of the attendance. Protest. So. Was that protest? protest? Yeah, you needed Donald Trump there. Yeah. there <laughs> <at> the <laughs> it's kind of what they needed, but it was still good. Uh, it, was a, it was informative and not overly political. Yeah. Uh, it, it would talk a lot about the construction, which is my background. I, I somewhat argue about it. So, um, you know, I thought it was good information, but nothing that I would be familiar with. Mm -hmm. uh, and, and I was hoping to hear a little bit more. No well, bills, it, no nothing? Yeah. No bills? No Is he Wait, talking? Yeah. Yeah. Come on. Isn't he talking? <laughs> yeah, I was hoping, I thought Al was going to follow, follow me. This is in a construction site. Yeah, yeah. 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 So, uh, so I went too, and I went and saw a talk about climate action and how to um, there's, I guess there's a tool. So there's a website. Here it is, climateactiontool.org. And the state is trying to connect um, people in our position with a tool that they can hone in on special areas or special creatures or special habitats and then get direct resources for how to uh, preserve, protect, and prepare your community for upcoming climate changes. So they're trying to make, it was, so they told us a little bit, of, mostly spent the, the talk telling us how to navigate the website, which to me was like, come on. Uh, but anyway, um, and then they asked for feedback about what they, we want, what they want us, what we want to see on the website as additional information. Um, so I thought that was, I thought that was moderately interesting. I I, uh, I was going to go to the gas talk, but instead I went in the afternoon to how recent precipitation changes may may affect wetlands regulations. And that talk was actually given by the people, a woman who works with NOAA on Atlas 14, which is a newer. Um, evaluation of what kind of rain you can expect on an annual basis based on current data or up through 2014 and then there was a second presenter that showed up and talked about um, the national uh, from Cornell talking about the Cornell data so both of them went through all their mad data analysis smoothing averaging methods and at the end DEP got up and said how does this impact you guys we're looking at this new rain this new precipitation sets of data that is current that takes into account the newest best high quality data and we're starting to develop and devise possible strategies on how to use this in permits they said maybe a first scenario is we use this data set for this and this data set for this, but we want your feedback, we want your input. So, but that didn't mean how would we change the regulations or how would we use that information? How would we, where I think that affects us most is in stormwater management because the size of those culverts and the size of those detention basins are determined based on design storms. And a design storm. You have to you have to assume a certain set of rainfall events that you would expect to see in that area, and um, the old data set, which I think was last published in 1997, maybe Jamie, you know. Um, I think it was before that. Before that, only has weather data that stops in like 65. And the newest, the newest precipitation data basically is that a typical 100-year storm, based on that old data set, is now happening every 66 years. So we're getting the more intense storms more, frequency, more frequently, which is what all the climate change mm -hmm. models have always predicted. We'll have more drought. We'll have more extreme precipitation. So. You know, so instead of designing for a seven inch or six and a half inch of rain, extreme event in Reading, 
the new models predict, you know, eight to 10 inches of rain. You know, and that's a big difference in this town. And if we're not designing for that volume, um, we we're going to flood out your neighbors. We're going to flood out your neighbors. But at the same time, that's the whole thing about this climate change thing. Oh, okay. Is, it See is a, it. it's oh. a moving target, probably. <laughs> okay. You know, so they were even huh. saying with the adaptations yeah. they said on this climate yeah. action tool, they said, well, if I plant Too these trees enough. next to this brook to make sure that the brook stays cooler in the summer because air temperatures are going to be warmer to protect that brook trout, that sensitive species that's moving through my habitat. Is that going to do it? Is that going to really help ensure climate change? And they basically said, well, that's the best we could say now. Yes. You know, <laughs> that, you know, within, by the time those trees actually get a chance to mature and develop, maybe the water temperature has also changed. And maybe something else needs, you know? So that's probably the change. I don't know is the answer. How do you fix it? Right. How do you fix it as it's happening? Because you may do something as best you can, and you may never know if it actually did any good. Well, that was a little bit of a, that was a hard takeaway for me. But, but it was kind of realistic. OK. Um, so we talked about the conference, no emergency permits, bills? No bills. Minutes. Yes, there are we two did sets admit. of minutes. <laughs> you guys, did you guys review your minutes? Didn't review I know Mike made some comments, which I agreed with. Mike did. But I only saw one set of minutes. I guess I It was an old guess, set. Did we not approve the, the minutes last meeting because yeah. of how late everything was <laughs> gone? The meeting Thanks. before that. Yeah. I, I didn't have any comments. I saw other people's comments on the minutes. So what, what, uh, which one are you talking about? I correctly. I have no comments on January 13th. And in the I minutes and, and, and the initial correction. So I'm not going to comment on it. So no comments on January 13th. Harry tried. Motion to approve Harry the tried minutes. to correct well, me. I, they, I tried. <laughs> they were friends, comments. But it wasn't enough. <laughs> You made comments, right? On the 24th. We're talking, we're well, let's about. do the 13th. Um, the copies of the 13th. And if anybody wants to see my copy, you can. Did you, you, you read them? On the 13th? I, I looked at it. I read through it. I don't have any comments. Is Dale's name spelled correctly? <laughs> I can't sit here. Maybe Al can check it. You're supposed to bring these to me. <laughs> oh, really? So I have to put a more willing person in that spot. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> or you, you so I move we, we approve the January 13 minutes. Second. Second. All those in favor? All abstained? Opposed? None. Okay. And about what's the last I, I move we approve the 224 24 minutes. Second. As modified as by as modified by collective members. Second. All those in favor? Abstained? Okay. Um, so, Julie, do you think you can make those changes, take out the watermark, and issue finals? Mm -hmm. Sure. And so send those yeah. off to check so that we have mm -hmm. those in our files. Mm -hmm. That'd be great. Just they sure. also need to be posted, right? They yeah, are the posted. Donor. Yeah. Clerk Sorry. takes care of that. Un unrelated, Becky, am I the one that's saving it as a, a docx? I don't know. I can't. I well, this last time I emailed it from this computer. This is like a Libre, some older word processor. Word Normally, I send them to um, to myself here, and then convert it to a word document, and then send it out to everybody. Yeah, so this time was a little confusing because I sent it from this, okay. and it doesn't. Open properly. But yours was in Doc X, and I've got that's the yeah the newer version of. See, I, 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 I can save it back when I I, I just, uh, I'll make sure I pay attention to that. What's Doc X? So it's the uh, most recent. Yeah, well, my computer, computer is sold. Uh, yeah, twelve maybe is when they started. I couldn't open it on my phone either. Yeah, too long it's on the train. Um, so I'll, I can save it back. Uh, one one last question, if you're done with minutes. Yeah. Um, can we um, can we 
we, is, is there any interest by any other members in changing the site visit time? When is it? Oh, yes. We need to talk I about that. I haven't been on one in three months. <laughs> We've got folks that actually work for a living. <laughs> Sorry. Sorry. We go to work. <laughs> right. Well, I don't work. That's the couple So we have been, because we didn't have day, we didn't have light. Uh, we u typically do the the site visits on Sunday mornings around nine o'clock um, when it's the summer, fall, spring when there's light. No, it's the other way around. We do them Sunday morning in the winter. Oh, that's right. We do it in the Monday afternoon at six-ish six in yeah. the summer when it's light. And we have done them in the dark, though. They're not very productive, <laughs> but we have done site visits in the dark. So I'm not available in the winters to do the Sunday visits. Ski season over? Oh, yeah. Don't say that. No, it's not. No, no. So, so you do it Mondays at six. We have been in the no. summer. So in the summer. spring. So spring currently, winter. lately, we've been doing a Monday three o'clock, oh. uh, which is inconvenient for uh, you, for you week. folks. Yeah, and which I, I think I'm amenable to a change. Um, you know, I, I think that at the time that we switched it to to Monday at three, it seemed like that was the best time for everybody. We got two new members, the, yeah. and you know, I think one of the members that it was originally, Brian originally liked to well, but he never really came. We didn't go. Yeah. So, <laughs> so, <laughs> but, really? so I, 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 as we always said, it was worth just revisiting every now and then. So I, I think that's, that's fine. I think more people are looking for a Sunday morning site oh. visit until it gets dark. Why don't you propose that, I mean, is that the only day? It's either Monday at three or Monday at seven or Sunday at nine. Well, Does that work for everybody. What else? What else would it be? My yeah. my only challenge is. You work downtown. I've been on a train. I get home usually take a five thirty or five thirty five train. I'm here around quarter seven. Sure. That's can, can you do Sunday mornings? I can do Sunday mornings. I can't. Mornings. You I can't work another do. job. I I could do Fridays in the afternoon or morning. I can do Friday in the afternoon. Ooh. So the only thing with Fridays. I could do Wednesday afternoon. Is do we have the? We don't always have the packets by Friday, right? Right. No, no, always. Yeah. Sometimes we do. Sometimes we don't. Well, you could pick them right up at town hall. I could leave them. Yeah. Okay. There's no place to leave them, but. Uh, no, I don't you know. You wouldn't, Friday, right? you wouldn't have them by Friday. You know? It's it's impossible unless you came down on Thursday and picked them up. Well, Friday for me is better than Sunday. Delivered them. Uh, I'm open. You know, I, I'm away a lot of weekends, but it's, it's easier for us to do it. Why don't we why don't we see who has um, the best availability? You know, and people who can. The most number of people who can make a site visit time, we go with that. So if there's the best chance that there will be the most number of people there. How many people can do Monday at six? Monday at six at mm -hmm. night. Yeah. So so. You, uh, you have a class. So so Monday at six right right now is still not really a good option, though, right? What about Tuesday? Well, the, at the, clocks, the clocks go back on the twelfth. What about Tuesday I would at argue six? Tuesday's kind of too close to well, the meeting. We have site site report. We have the site visit notes. Yeah, well, we only have a dozen, so <laughs> you know what's the point? What's, what's the problem? Go. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, really? Yeah, Monday, <laughs> Monday, Monday the twenty. The, the first next one would be is the twenty first, right? So we, the clocks would be back. It's light till seven thirty, quarter of eight. Yeah, but you said you said you couldn't get there till six thirty. I I can scoot out a little early on Mondays. I think work. Don't scoot out at noon time. Take the afternoon off. <laughs> <laughs> so Jamie is the only one who can't make it on Monday. You can't do Monday at six. Yeah, after May fifth.
semester's over, I could make it in the next oh. two months. Well, what time can you make it? Can't Couldn't make, make it, it on, on Monday. Monday. Well, can't, can't do Sunday. Sunday. Can't do Tuesday. I can do Sunday. Sunday works okay. for Jamie. Who, who yeah. can do Sunday at 9? We didn't figure out who could do that. Yeah. They think I can do that. At this point. So there's it's the same amount of people. You could do that, Al, can't you? Not the summer. <laughs> it's not summer yet. It's not summer, but could you do it? If I it can was, do it for a month or two. It, if we yeah. did it for the next two months, could you do it? Yeah. So it's like now there's five people that can do it. <laughs> what, what we could do, and what we've done in the past when we have a lot of site visits, have two groups. Half of them see yeah. one set, the other half see the other set. That way, the two groups can go at different times. Yeah, that's worked well. That's so worked fairly that's, well. That's worked fairly well. We've always done it at the same time, but there's no reason we have to. Right. We could have an A team and a B team. So the only I kind of like seeing everything that I can. Well, you could come for both. You could be an A B. You could be a switch hitter. A B type. Oh, easy now. The only thing with that is. You then have to make sure before every site visit that you have enough people to actually fill the A spot and the B spot. Well, right, it takes, right. It takes a, a little bit more pre-planning than saying. Uh, right, I, I agree with that. And another part of that is that usually, you know, if, uh, if a client's going to meet us out on site, that would be would have to be a guaranteed thing, so yeah. that we don't, you know, leave other consultants hanging out in the field. But I. We can't just say I would gather from the site visits notes they've been pretty poorly attended over the last few months. Yeah. It's poorly, I don't know. I think Al went to every single one of them. I think we've, we've had a I missed, I missed, smaller mission. Missed one. one. Right. And Becky goes to every one. And Mike, you were pretty Mike's much there. And I went to every one. So we had, yeah. we had a better attendance than the previous six months, I would think. Because yeah. I think this started because Becky was going by herself on Sunday all the time. <laughs> wait in the parking lot nobody would show up so that wasn't working as long as people go it makes a lot of sense but how do we coordinate Sunday and Monday let's figure that out or Sunday and whatever the other day is we could alternate that way same people wouldn't miss all of them so it's not a problem for me to tell everybody homeowners and applicants well if there's some like a consultant's going to meet you there we'd have to have a definite time but we've been saying um, on a couple occasions that the commission will be there anytime between 12 and 530 well, so what about okay. what about because there are a lot of times they're not meeting you they're just right. allowing you to you know is are the 12 and 530 that's too broad a window it was the time that we went to Al's place that so we were meeting there at 1 and we had a site visit the same day at 3 so I had no idea when to, what to tell people so I gave them a range and no one objected to it so um, I could say the commission will come out Monday and Sunday and Monday, and and uh, give them the times and and let them know that, that any either day they could be out there. I don't know. Is that all, is it all? I think getting too convoluted. It sounds like a lot of people can do Sunday. I, I think establishing it for Sunday, I think, for the the near future. I think the same way we established it for Monday and said, well, let's revisit this if it starts to get dark, uh, lighter later and. You know, it seems like they're still we're have an opportunity to get more attendance by switching the day again. I, I think there's you know, it, it, Monday doesn't work for yeah. the, you and Nika, and Monday doesn't work for you, Jamie. I think <coughs> that's enough reason to, to switch it. How, how long Sunday will work start? for me till the end of May. It's usually two hours, but they've been four. Yeah, yeah they're, they're kind of stretched out. Some, some people like to roam around off on the group and take longer than Yeah, sometimes we lose a member, it takes a while to find it. That's how good the weather is. And we, we had a former commissioner that wanted to talk for half an hour with every applicant. That slowed him down. All right, so we're gonna, are we agreeing it's Sunday morning, 9 o'clock, for the next few months? Yeah. Is that what we're agreeing on? I think that's good. All right, anything else to talk about? Let's go home. What else we got? Anything? I don't have anything. Were we going to schedule a 
I'd like to. Uh, can I go to the sites on my own, like you on sure Monday can. at night, yep. if you tell me the address? Well, you'll have the site visit uh, agenda. The agenda has where the site visits are, and you can go to any site after they um, submit their application. And you know, usually the commission, this commission, likes them to be noticed or notified that people are coming out. But that's not. That's just being polite. You can yeah, just go yeah, there. Sure. Well, I'd say it's more than being polite. They are our customers, and having somebody show up. That's called being polite. It's being polite. It also protects us from. As long as I have their contact information, I can. You can try to give them a call, yeah. or we could we could make the call for you. Yeah. Um, Say so we'll we'll be there before you, so we could say you know yeah. you might nope. expect. And, and if nothing else, you're not going to go and say yeah, conservation commission on the property. You don't look that threatening, Al. Yeah. Al, I'd worry about. <laughs> but Amy, I think you're okay. It's an enforcement situation. You Do I hear a motion to make a motion to adjourn? Do I so hear moved. All those in favor? We are adjourned. See, on, Amy, on the um, last page of the agenda, it lists where the site visits are. Oh, okay, that's not bad. That's not bad. How would I know where to go? One general way. A house or something? No, actually, one general way is Dana's property. It's market basket. But all the others are addresses. Okay. So, because I know there's a little cape on the corner of that street. So we're talking Sunday the 20th. That's where market basket is in between market basket. No, that particular one is that whole area. Oh, that street. Okay. All right. On the weekend. Yeah, and I, but usually it's a hazard. I don't necessarily it's okay. on Sundays, I can but if I teach all that. day on Saturday, and then I got to drive back on Saturday. Well, I was going to say, if you're going to the meetings I'm going out with on Monday, I'll still vote. Yes. Yes. And maybe you're meeting the meeting. Yeah, maybe that's what we do. Well, that's only going to be for a few more weeks. So, it's like it's true. Yeah, really. so maybe one Sunday is okay. Yeah. Um, who's, who's posted to people? You know, not to steal away from Sunday, but it'll probably be a particular. Oh, good. Okay, very good. Thank you. Thank you.